everybody. This is Resonance Cascade. <laughs> Resonance Cascade. I knew I'd do it. I knew I'd do it. Oh, <laughs> that's what it's influenced by, at least. Anyway, um, this is Resonance Arcade, rather. Um, I'm Chris. Yeah, and we've got Lewis Septimus Lane with us. We've got Sam Hyperdeath Collett, and we've got Stephen Stee Pip. Yes. Oh, imagine it was my. Uh, that, it was either Stee or Pippy, The two different. The two different types that he yeah. goes for. Um, just to check, we're all unmuted. Yep. You've all, you're all back on yep. good stuff. There we go. So, yeah, hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, we are just going to be talking about games, game design, uh, get levels and maps in games as a subject today. And, um, yeah, so if you, one of the things I need to say quickly before we start is if you are very easily offended, then walk away. <laughs> Close your web browser because we try not to swear, but there may be there may be a few swear words dropped in here. Um, and all, as always, we're interested in your opinions as well. Uh, if you're in the chat and you you want to get involved, uh, prefix any questions with a, a Q Q colon and then a question so we can identify them. Um, I'm sure we'll be able to identify anyway at the moment. There's not that many people uh, around, but yes. Yeah, so we'll um, we'll kick off. Um, First thing that we were going to do is just to have a quick recap on last show, last week's show. Uh, oh well, first of all, actually, we'll introduce Steve because uh, he is new to the uh, new to the team. I am. Uh, Steve is uh, a friend of me and Lou's. Um, introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself. Um, I'm Steve. I'm a friend of Chris and Lou's. <laughs> 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 I know that was coming. Steve is another one, himself. I think. Steve's another one with uh, with nothing to pimp and does nothing apart from, you know, work, come home, play games. And, yeah, for yeah. me, games are very much a recreational thing. Um, I've been playing them all my life. In fact, one of my first memories is playing games. One of your first memories is playing games. What, what it, game was that? It was, uh, I think it was Jet Set Willy. <laughs> is this on the Acorn Electron? It was, yeah. I remember that thing. It's not that a bad brilliant. game, that, though. That, I played it on the um, Amiga, I Un think. Uncompletable, though. Yeah, well, as with most... Talking about games. level design. Yeah, I mean, mm. I, I, I used to play um, games like... Well, I don't think it was broken, but games like Paperboy that I couldn't complete. I, 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 it was just too hard. And games like Chucky Egg, I don't know if you ever played that. Yeah, it's Chucky the, Egg didn't really hold that much longevity for me. Well, there was nine levels, and it repeated itself. That was it. And yeah. it just got harder and harder and harder. And I only ever got to, like, level nine once, and there was this big duck that got... It, it kind of, <laughs> I remember that. This big duck just got released from a cage, and that was it. Yeah. I, think, I think there was more than nine levels, but maybe I only ever got to level nine. It used nine to fly levels. around dropping flashing eggs on you. Um, I can't remember that. that? I, know, I, know, I know there was eggs and, and grain and that involved in, in <laughs> jumping over ducks and getting killed every five seconds. <laughs> oh, the good old days of gaming. Yeah, and then the bloody horrible sounds that <laughs> running along, yeah. Um, yeah, so today's subject is um, is levels and maps. We Last week was our first show. Um, we didn't really know what we were doing, but we went down fairly well. There was a, a fair few, fair decent reception. So we thought we'd try and put a bit more structure into today. Um, obviously, I'm uh, trying to keep people on track. We are going to stick to a two-hour runtime. We'll be putting on uh, on YouTube a, a cut down version. Lou's going to do some video editing for us, uh, and hopefully, hopefully that'll be easier for some people who don't like rambling to uh, absorb. So yeah, um, first of all, the podcast name. We have spent the entire week banging our head against the wall trying to come up with a name that we liked, sounds interesting, relates to games a little bit, and kind of you know isn't too tongue-in-cheek and doesn't have the word cast in it for one and you know isn't already taken as well so we've been through a considerable a, a document full of full of them and we've come up with uh, resonance cascade no we haven't we've come no, up we with haven't. resonance arcade <laughs> <laughs> which is influenced by half-life one if anybody doesn't uh, doesn't know that um on so i mean I, we, we, we we're going to read a few out um, to you, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Lou read a few out. <laughs> Thank um, you very much. Uh, and uh, and and we'll go with that. Right. Well, some of the um some of the names that we came up with. One of the ones that was stuck for quite a while, and we we were very serious about it for a point was called Gaming Brew. Um, because we all like tea and we're all British, or some of us do anyway. And it has a nice um, ring to it as well. I'll read a few out. Few out. Um, we've got Gaming Chat with British chaps. Bit of rhyme in there. Gentlemen and video games, which we decided were not 
gentlemen, so we can't really do that one. Um, bind T, give T. Which I liked, but I just thought it was too contrived. <laughs> Who's going to get that, though? That's the thing. It's like, it's, again, it's an old Quake reference. We used to write a lot of pack files and a lot of um, uh, uh, config files for and aliases and things like that. And bind T, give T is, you know, something that we might have written into. To the point where we got a Dutch guy to do a voiceover for us. Yes, yes. <laughs> Pills. Um, <laughs> Rail. We've got um, Beautiful Games, which, uh, yeah, whatever. Game Slots. Which is kind of half true. Smoggy cast, which we thought was a bit too um, region specific, since three of us are from um, from the Middlesbrough Teesside area. And we're called Smoggies, if you hadn't, if you didn't know that. Yeah, which is part of the reason why we didn't go for it, because people probably don't know that. Oh, and hate Smoggies as well. As well. Uh, and that, yeah, as well. <laughs> so yeah, hello, that one. hello haters. <laughs> uh, stereotypical male and British, which is SMB, which also stands for something else. We can um, say it. We can say that. That's okay. Suck, suck my balls. <laughs> suck my balls. Um, we've got the bloody wankers, which I'm sure Chris would have loved to have read out every single time. <laughs> um, and and the, the piece de resistance, um, which I really, really wanted to... to <laughs> I and really a, wanted us the, to do this the one. The beauty of this one is that it was a collaboration. We were doing, we were, we were updating a Google document, and at the time, I, I wrote the first part. Lou added a word into the middle of it, and then I added the one at the end or something like that. It just, yeah, go on. So, so the title is Jimmy Nails Rotating Middle Bollock of Doom, <laughs> which still makes me laugh. For some which, which is that an acronym for anything? Um. No, 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 no. Well, we didn't think that far ahead. We just thought this is utterly ridiculous. We'll either go with it and just go, <laughs> fuck it, you know, yeah. it's, it's on, or we, we, you know, it's not going to happen, which it isn't because it's daft. You know, you can't. It doesn't have any kind of resemblance, <laughs> uh, anything to do with the, the show at all. Yeah. And it is quite funny watching you get the name wrong every time you try and say it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. To, uh, two for two now. That. There's a lot. Yeah. Of two that. for two. Yeah, I, I imagine it's going to be a running thing. Um, so yeah, Resonance Arcade. So we, we've decided on that. Um, hopefully it, it's good enough. Hopefully, yeah, most of you don't care, to be fair. But you know, uh, <laughs> right. So um, yeah, I mean, last week we we briefly covered um, a few things, quite a few subjects. The the most controversial of which was um, not being able to stab kids in games. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Steve has watched the previous podcast or. or... I've watched the majority of it. I, see, I, I think I've missed this particular portion. Yeah, it was fair, fairly towards the end. So. It was, yeah. Mm. I, I, th I think what we established is that, that um, at least two of the people in this podcast at the moment like to stab kids. <laughs> I'm not uh, sure like that, is That's the right where we landed on that. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's accurate way of putting it, isn't it? No, no, no. I like to stab people. All, All right. people. All that's people, fair. yeah, yeah. Well, They're it, just it, little people. It's like excluding a whole race of people, you know. It's the same type of it's thing racist. to me. Yeah. It's but prejudice. It's racist. prejudice in some way, and I don't. It, I just don't like everyone included or not at yeah. all. South it's Park positive discrimination. It right. okay. Yes, okay. South Park. South Park got it right. You can laugh at everything, or you can't laugh at anything, and I'm I'm 100 percent behind that. You still can't stop kids. No, no, I don't. I said I don't want to stab kids, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> right. So moving on. Um, We'll 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 go through what we've been playing this week, um, specifically, you know what we've what we've been on with. I've uh, I've had a few a few new games this week, but um, we'll start from we'll start with Lou. What what have you been up with? Um, well, what? I briefly played um, Planet Explorers. Um, I was really kind of caught up in the the screenshots and the video of that. It's uh, basically an open world, procedurally generated RPG Minecraft em up. Right. Um, it's got elements of kind of MMOs and you get kind of you, you get quests to, to fetch things for um, an injured woman um, at the start of the, the single player mission but it it was a bit of a weird one because I don't think it's quite finished well it's it's early access and what happened was that I spawned and instantly got killed by 50 20 foot tall aliens nice. over and over and over again so was um, it not fun then? Did, is that literally what happened, or is that? It, that's li no, that's literally what happened. As in, <laughs> I, it, I, I was dead before the game finished loading. Right. So uh, the screen was so black and saying "Welcome to this planet," and and my character was screaming and dying, right, so and there was I, sounds of explosions around me. I can't ask you about the levels with that being the theme. I can't ask you what the levels were like and how the design was, well, was done. Well, the, the the levels are procedurally generated and they look pretty oh, course, good to be yeah. honest. 
Um, and that's possibly part of what we can talk about today. Uh, I have actually downloaded that game as well. Yeah, uh, I haven't yet. I've played it for a few hours, and um, I'm of the same opinion as Lou. It just there's an unfinished feel to the whole thing. Um, it seems in because on the, the early access game, there's two different modes you can play. Essentially, there's the adventure mode where you go through as a single player, or there's like more of a exploration mode. Where when I start the exploration mode for the first, I'd say ten minutes of the game, all that was popping up was all the items I was receiving. Right. <laughs> It was just a constant flow of items that I was receiving. And then when you open your inventory, it's just massively overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> Everything from a, a wooden shovel or a wooden axe right the way up to a jetpack. <laughs> so is it... Was, from the was beginning this, of the game, you don't have to work from, up to the jetpack. Well, this is the exploration mode, so oh, I right. think they give you everything to start off with and then just you know, like you can, um, like get on with it, whether you want to mine or build or explore. I'm yeah. pretty sure that I was started in exploration mode, and basically my exploration was getting killed by 20-foot aliens <laughs> constantly. Well, that's the thing with that's that's one of the arguments with um, pre-release games, isn't it, or, or pre-alphas or whatever they're called. I, I can never remember the actual early access. That's what early access. Around. Yeah, it's a problem problem with them that, that you have to be careful about what which ones you select. It's like I, I go back to the own, the first pre-alpha that I uh, ordered early access that I ordered um, was um, Prison Architect and that was actually on off Steve's uh, Steve's uh, suggestion and I loved it it was broken I had to hack it to actually get it working I had to give myself some money because there was no way to make money in the game um, but I, I loved it at the same time but that's the problem it was broken it's kind of fixed ish now but there's still issues with it and you know mm. it's, it's one of those things are they, are they even worth going for at the moment you know do you do... well I suppose it depends on what level you take it I mean these games are meant for entertainment so you've played it it's entertained you for several you know hours tens of hours maybe yeah so it, from that point has it, has it already fulfilled its purpose yeah well, well, well that's the thing I spent I spent a long time playing the prison architect a long you saw me, I was at me that, as well that land yeah. party was sat there everyone else was playing multiplayer games and me and Steve were playing individually oh my god look at this we could do this in prison build, build, a, build, a, build, a, build a execution chamber or what you know all the rubbish um, yeah, well, it was either that or a surgeon simulator yeah which I couldn't <laughs> I just could not control my laughter playing that I've never seen it before <laughs> and I got on I think it was your computer wasn't it Steve yeah. and I got on it got my hands in the right position, figured out the controls after about five minutes of just flapping around, and just died with laughter. It's brilliant. So, have you played anything else this week, Lou? Um, I've also played Civilization V with you and Steve, if you remember. Yep. <laughs> um, oh, yes. And yeah, that, 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 would, that went through to about three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it, um, was, it was the first time I played <laughs> until three in the morning for a long time. And, uh, it is, yeah, and that, that was a good eight, nine hours of gameplay we, we had. I spent yeah, the entire time not trusting everybody, though. I spent the entire time going, you're going to attack me, so I'm going to get all my troops ready. And, and I think that speaks volumes about you. <laughs> it does, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But it's just, I think it was just the way that I kept seeing, seeing troops appear around my, my borders and... You know, you, you yeah, but your borders were between. everywhere. Yeah, all right. But well, that was my that was my plan to take over the world, and your plan was to spread religion everywhere. And have you um, have you played Civilization at all, Sam, or have you heard of it? You I know, know what, of it. I've never played it. You know what kind of game it is? Then it's uh, yeah, yeah. like an RTS turn based. Sorry, it's, it's a CBS rather. Yeah, it is. Four X. Yeah. Um, I I quite enjoy it. I'll be honest. I think it's a uh, it's a pretty good one. Is it I've Civilization Five supposed to, to be? Brilliant. I've heard it's very highly rated, isn't it? So five. The, I think the meta score for it's not as high as four, but I, is it not? I, I personally prefer it. I've not played four or any previous ones, so I don't. Me know. neither. Um, but I do like five. I think it's really, it's very, very addictive. Very mm. addictive. Um, so Sam, what have you been up to this week? Um, I, the only game I played this week is Shovel Knight. I haven't played anything else. Uh, you, you got it then. Yeah, I got it on Steam and been playing it on my like, just on my laptop. But I, oh, wish I could, wish I had a controller for the laptop. Cause... He's, he's <laughs> entered, he's entered the realm of PC gaming at last. Is There's no turning PC back game? now. Um, no, look, cause remember I said, what was it? I said I did like Command and Conquer a little bit. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, back in the day. Like, yeah, <laughs> and like, in 1990, well, I played the 1995 version, but later, but yeah, just Shovel Knight. So. Have um, you? You, you say that you haven't got a controller, but you've got a USB, uh, USB cable and uh, um, a PSA. Yeah, you, ha 
you have to install some um, I can give additional you... drivers or something to do that, don't you? Um, I'm using something called DS4. Uh, DS4 something, I can't remember what it's called for my PS4 one, but there's a, a D, there's a DS3 equivalent of it. I'll give you a I'll give you a link to it. I could have done it, I was just too lazy. I was like, I could do that, or I could just start playing me and just start playing on the laptop suppose, and didn't bother. I suppose it's something to come on the show and complain about, isn't it? So, <laughs> so what kind it's of game is Shovel Yeah, so basically Shovel Knight is a, a 2D sort of side-scrolling sort of Metroidvania type game, uh, very much in the mould of, of emulating 8-bit the 8-bit experience so um it's it's obviously not got 8-bit graphics but it has that look to it it all the sounds it sort of looks like a like a NES game and i i've never played um, a lot of those classic NES games but i know about them so much because they're so ingrained in your culture like you can see so much of uh, mega man in there particularly with yeah. these indiv- individual bosses that you have a little chat to and they're all themed after a certain level like, so they've all got their own level like one of them is like called specter knight who's in like a haunted castle you know that kind of thing and you go and fight mm. him and he's like oh i'm going to kick your head in and then you have a little fight and all the boss battles are unique and test your different skills and that it's one of those kind of games Spectre Knight was a bastard he was I, I played it I got it myself and I've been playing it this week a little mm. bit and um, it I, I don't know about he's you, the worst one I found oh. it really difficult I was like you fucking scythe just it, it wouldn't it, it, you're on you're on a few platforms uh, or he's on a few platforms I think there's two isn't there one on each side or maybe yeah. three well, actually, one in the middle yeah, he wasn't that bad. The um, what's the one called? I can't remember his name. The one who's got like the the old school doctor's mask on with the beak on it. Oh, who's just chucking? Oh, he's awful. When you get to him, I can't remember his name. He's like in the uh, it's like a diseased castle that's all like diseased and stuff, and it's all science gone wrong. Right, I did. Um, I did two of them. Um, one was Spectre Knight, and one was the was it King Knight or something like that? Is he called? The, oh right, yeah. I'm probably. Knight. I think. I think I'm quite a bit further than you. I think I'm quite near the end of the game. I'm about two three quarters of the way. It's the only game I've played this week, so I have done quite a lot. It's it, really good fun. Very good fun. A, I put a video up on my YouTube um, playing. I think you commented on it, actually. So yeah, I saw some of it, yeah. yeah it's, I, I, that's as much as I've played, and I haven't played any games since then, I'll be honest. Right, fair dues. Anything else you played this week? Just that? Just that. Yeah, I said I, I played it too. That was one of my games I was going to talk about, and it's yeah, I quite enjoyed it. It was... Um, uh, I enjoyed it, but I, I also felt a little bit like it was repeating itself. You know, it's it is a Metroid game. It is a Metroidvania game. It is a little bit like collect stuff, get a little bit better for every level. You know, I don't I don't know. It's maybe just done a bit too much for me for now. It's been done too many times before. You know, possibly. Interestingly, I haven't played that many games like that before. Like I really have. I I picked up Symphony of the Night on the PlayStation Network, but I'd never played a Castlevania two D game before that one. So for me, it's it is kind of a bit new. I've watched a lot of other people talk about how great Mega Man was back in the day and all that, and I'm like, Do you know what? They actually sound like the kind of games I would really enjoy. Mm. So when a new one came out that had all that, all those elements chucked in together, I just thought, I'll, I'll get it. You know, so I've I, I really enjoyed it. The Mega Man franchise again. It was one of my childhood staples. I uh, I loved it. I, I can't remember too much about it. I remember that again. You had different bosses with different themed levels and stuff, and you collected different upgrades as you went along. Mm-hmm. And I think I think basically you upgraded your gun, and you could fire different elements and things like that. By the end of it. again, I'm really sorry to any Mega Man fans out there <laughs> that are probably offended by the fact I don't know that much about it. But yeah, I, I, I did quite enjoy them. I used to always prefer uh, the, um, the, uh, the Turrican series ah, as opposed to Mega Man. I like Turrican as well, but again, I found that very hard. I never Turrican, really... Turrican was, uh... was very hard. Yeah, it was also very linear, wasn't it? By comparison, yeah, it I mean, the, 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 one of the um, the staples of the the Metroidvania thing is that you collect something which allows you to get a little bit further and go back to a door that you couldn't open, and that's mm. kind of the, that, that's that's how it all works. W- one thing yeah. I did like it did remind me very much of Mario World and Mario Three because you can go around a map and well, the overworld, you, mm. and you can go back to levels as Lou just said. You can you can yeah yeah you, then you can go back use a new power and stuff and get in somewhere. I did find it a little bit confusing right at the beginning because it was dead simple. There was you've literally got a shovel and that's it, and and you can do a down attack and a forward attack and that was it. And I was like, is that going to be it? And then I realised it was a Metroidvania, you know, and it builds. Up. Interesting uh, bit of trivia. Apparently, it's the twenty eighth uh, anniversary of Metroid today. Yeah. Today. Hey. Today. Whoa. Happy birthday, nice. Metroid. The first. Happy birthday, Metroid. Birthday, Metroid. The first Metroid, yeah. So uh, Super Metroid is my favourite out of all of the Metroid games. I don't know if any of you guys ever played that. I'm sure um, Super have. Metroid was the first one that I actually played. Yeah, uh, and I've a... played Metroid or Metroid Two. I ninety nine percented that, and I could not. I don't even know what I couldn't find because I had all of the upgrades, I had all of the health, I had everything, and I don't know what I hadn't done. I Wasn't the secret costumes or something? Uh, not that I'm aware of. 
Maybe there was. Maybe that's what it was. I don't think. No, I don't think. I think Super Metroid. It, it, isn't it that one where it basically reveals that Samus Aran is actually female? The original the Metroid. End? Yeah. Oh, is it the original? It does yeah, that. Yeah. I've yeah. actually, I actually saw a screenshot of it today somewhere. Um, said uh, one of the things in the show as well later on. We're, we're hopefully going to get the facility to start showing you videos while we're talking about things and um, you know little screenshots and things while we're we're going over it. So one of us will be feverishly typing away in the background trying to find relevant material to show you. Probably me, to be honest, with me streaming it. So Steve, what have you been up to this week? What have you, what have you had on? Uh, well, this week I've been playing Civilization with your good selves. Mm -hmm. um, Planet Explorers, as we've already discussed there. Right. But the main game I've actually been playing is a Nintendo 3DS game uh, called Fire Emblem. Oh, right, yeah, you were talking about that when you were doing Civ. What's, yeah. What kind of game is that? Um, it's a strategy game. It's very much in the same vein as uh, an old game for the Mega Drive, I believe, called Warsong. I've uh, Lou's that, got yes. fond memories of that. Um, but it's basically it's a, a turn-based strategy. Um, and the strategy, well, uh, the game itself is only interspersed with FMV or cutscenes. So the only thing you actually do in the game, the only input you do is the strategy part of it. Right. So it's quite a nice twist. And it is basically... If you skip through all the dialogue, because the dialogue goes on forever and it's not really that relevant to the game from what you can see so far, um, it is just like a tactical little portable game you can carry around with you, and it's excellent. Um, the production values are fantastic. Yeah, do you find the the DS as a, a good cons a good handheld? Because I've had limited use, limited play with it. Um, I use the XL. Um, I can't get away with a normal one because after a while, I just start getting like crazy pains in my fingers. Because of the position where the um, the buttons and the analog stick are, right. but with the XL, the version I've got now, I actually do find I can play that consistently for a good few hours. And the games that are out for it, if you obviously take away the obvious ones like your Mario's and the normal Nintendo franchise, there's actually quite a good um, JRPG line on it. Right. If you like JRPGs, I've uh, just finished playing Bravery uh, Default on it. And Bravery Default. Uh, well, if, if you do search on Google for it, there's a massive following behind it. Right. It's a really, really good game. And that's what he's going to do now. I am. I'm just going to have a look. On your loud keyboard. Oh my, oh my. And your concrete keyboard. It's, yeah, it's like. It's but it's essentially graphics. an RPG game uh, where the, the twist of it is you assign each, each of your characters jobs, and the job defines what skills to have. And you can master each job, and there's, I think there's a total of 24. So if you're anal like me and you want to get all your characters mastered on every one of these jobs, it takes absolutely forever. I, um, I don't know why, whenever I see a JRPG or anything anime related, I always type into Google, like, for example, Bravery Default Fan Art. I don't know why, because it just it fascinates me how weird that world is in, for us yeah. Westerners. You know, it's, it's such a strange, strange world. Um, I'm not going to show you some of the photos. I'm sure you can have a look for yourself <laughs> if you care. There's there's a few that are quite strange. There's a yeah, there's a, a really quite overweight pirate looking thing. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, anything else, Steve? Any, you've been working out? Um just work apart from that unfortunately. Yeah. No, I've I've not had that much time for games this week. I've had a a, a few though. I uh, I did a stream and a, a uploaded to YouTube an entire playthrough of Lifeless Planet. And guess what it was about? A planet with, with lots life of life on it. it. Or life. <laughs> yes, and imagine playing a game like that. Imagine if it's... Can you think... Do you think it's fun? It's think, a was it, <laughs> Sorry? Like, was it at least compensated for by having no life but robots? Or that's exactly just, what I was going to say. That's just, if it had robots <laughs> on it, then yeah, awesome. I will, but, I will describe it, Lifeless Planet, as, a, um, uh, as an advent Not adventure game, as an exploration mm -hmm. game. So we're looking at, I, well, during my stream, I was saying, basically, this reminds me, the feel and the tone of it reminded me of Gone Home, uh, Dia, Dia Resta, that kind of thing, you know, that kind of, like, it's an experiment in gaming in my eyes. It's more like a, a visual novel. Um, right. When I played through it, I, I'd, it took me about six hours, but I would say roughly about five hours of that was walking around on a lifeless planet. Like quite you got exactly was... what you paid for there, yeah, Chris. Yeah, exactly. And to be fair, I looked at it beforehand. Um, I can't remember where I saw it now, but I looked at it and it was... Um, I liked the look. I liked the, 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 
that was it. I saw it on a Humble Bundle, and I think I got it on that same Humble Bundle because there was something else I fancied. Um, and uh, yeah, it's the, the video is intriguing because right at the beginning, uh, the, the you find a civilization. You know, you see like a town in the distance on the video, and that intrigued me. That kept, that made me want to play it a little bit. And then I did it, and I walked to this town, and this town is desolate. And then the next bit you go to is desolate, and then something <laughs> weird starts happening. And then you meet this woman who's kind of like. She's like a radioactive tree Russian. That that is basically what she a radioactive tree Russian. There we go. Brilliant. Is she alive? She's alive. Uh, well, the game. I'm not going to spoil anything yeah. else for you, but yeah, she's alive at the beginning. Put it that way. She speaks with a she's a tree that them. speaks with a Russian accent. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the problem was as well. well yes, yeah, she does speak with a Russian accent. Now, one of the thing, one other thing about the game as well, the dialogue. Right, you're an American. Um, I think. Uh, I don't know if this actually exists, but the NSSA. Is that actually exist as a? It's probably NASA that it's taken a piss out of, or it's a parody of NASA. But well, the NSA in, is a nas national security agency. No, it's an NSSA. It's. I think right. it's probably supposed to be NASA or whatever. But I wasn't sure if I was just being ignorant and that it did actually exist. Um, you're this American dude, so you're the main guy. Every now and again, you pick something up and you say something, but you say like a couple of words, and then you're you've got a. a, a it's an indie game written in Unity, by the way, as well. Um, you've got a. Uh, like a log and the, you, you read the log and I was trying to read it out now every time you picked up a, a log that was translated from Russian all of the Russian dialogue was read over the top of it while you were reading it and you imagine trying to read it if you don't mm. read Russian and it's and it's speaking Russian to you I had to turn my sound down every time I was doing it so I could read it out to the to the stream and um, by the time I turned it back up the Russian was still going but none, there was no English in it apart from the occasional thing that um, the the protagonist would say, and it was very small. Like you you pick up a really big log that was his his thoughts, and it'd just be like the first line that was read. I just found it really weird that they invested time in the Russian side, but not not in the English it, as well. Is it a Russian game by any chance? Well, I did look that up, and I couldn't. I can't <clears> remember. I'll be honest. I, <laughs> I probably should have should have looked that up in a bit more detail. Um, it might be. Have a have a look. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, to be fair, the game it's an experiment. If if you if you're in, interested in the story in a story of a lifeless planet and what the fuck happened here, then yeah, go for it. Um, and I'm well aware, by the way, that I'm swearing more than you guys, and I'm the one who told you guys not to swear on this. Uh, <laughs> what a hypocrite! <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I play, played Lifeless Planet, um, obviously been playing Civ Five, uh, Shovel Knight a little bit, and I've also, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this lightweight, but I've been, I've been playing um, Divinity Original Sin. Did I mention that last week? I don't think you did last week. Um, um. I might have played it just after the podcast. Anyway, it's an RPG. Um, it's an interesting RPG because you play it as two characters, and from the very beginning you're kind of arguing with yourself the dialogue system is you 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 have to build up like personality points and and skill points and different traits and things like that as you're talking to each other so the choices that you choose determine your character's personality and that then changes how people react to you in the world etc now i played it for a, a couple of hours again i did a stream of it because i was I, I don't know i just i wanted I, I wanted to kind of get new content out there and um I, I didn't get along with it. I mean, I died like the second enemy that I came to, to and I had a tank. I had a, a, a dude at the front, and I also had um, like a mage, like a powerful mage as well to do the distance damage. But I didn't really know what I was doing. I'll be honest. And it just, mm. I just, I didn't, I didn't get it. It's very, very complex. If you like RPGs, and you really, really like RPGs, it's a very, very good game. I think, but you need to invest time into learning it. Um, I watched um, Josie, uh, the host of the MMO, MMO buff show I, I do, um, and she was playing it for a few hours the other night, and she knows what she's doing in it, and it looked a lot more interesting than I made it because she knows and because she was like using all the different skills and all the traits and actually understanding it. She actually went through the tutorial bit as well, which I decided to skip because I was like, oh, I'm streaming. I don't want to skip. I don't want to go to a tutorial. It'll be boring for everyone. I'm boring anyway when I stream. So, <laughs> so like, what was the point? But I think I'm going to give it another go. It's one of those that I think is going to be really, really rewarding. Um, there's a decent story in it from what I can tell the voice acting's brilliant it's an indie studio that's done it but it's a it's a triple A like quality game it's very mm. very good 
uh, very good looking rather. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I've played this week. Not much, uh, just just those two. Uh, I think we spent most of this week thinking up names for this show, haven't we? So <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Um, and let's not forget the like epic game of Civilization Five that basically used up all my gaming hours for the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. And that was most mostly my fault. Um, I, I, I promise I will never ever attack any of you two ever again. I've actually looked into that, and there's a different game mode we can play and make that a bit more streamlined. Okay, cool. We were playing. We had to wait 15 minutes while I did a turn because I had like 700 cities. So, you know, everyone else had like two or three sensibly, and I'd, I'd taken over half the bloody continent. Um, and then Steve was building up all of his all of his science and making himself like really defensive and stuff. And I, I and I was just building troops constantly. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing on that game either. It's another really complicated game that. You have to invest time into again. Right. Any other so, games you guys want to particularly talk about before we move on? Um, I think that's it, really. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing that's re relevant to the topics we're going to discuss, really. Because we didn't, we haven't really talked about any of the the levels in these games. Um, no. I, I thought, well, go on, Sam. Uh, I would just say that from a level design point of view, obviously, the games that you've talked about, they're not really. Um, obviously, civilization. You don't really have levels as such. Do you? you? Do. Yeah. It's a areas. I mean, you do. You, you there's do. actually there's quite a lot of scope for the uh, for the levels in Civ Five. Um, yeah. With the uh, with the Brave New World add-on pack, I mean, there's you can have continents, you can have continents plus, you can have little strings of islands, you can have it so it's solid land with great lakes, you can have a replica of the actual world, the British Isles. Mm. Right, and okay. it's it, it's all about the resources and the terrain around you, and that's what makes the game quite interesting. Because if you get a good start, then you're pretty much set up. Or if you've got to kind of hunt around for a decent place to found your first city, that puts mm. you on the back leg straight away, and you've got to really fight to get back up to the same level as the other. And players. also, one of the games that I we played previously, I was started on this little tiny slither of land, and I just yeah. built my city immediately because I didn't again know what I was doing, um, and and. I had nothing around me. I had no resources. I had I had sea right next to my city, so I couldn't really build production up because the more tiles that you have around you, the more production you, you build up and the more food you have for your cities. And all of that really affects how you play the game and how fast you advance. I said it's really quite complicated. There's a lot of um, a lot of learning going into it. Um, but yeah, again, the levels are very different. I played a few games on the, the, world, uh, the, the world map and I mm. quite enjoyed playing that, but it's really weird the fact that one tile takes up London, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. It's quite strange. It, it's it's quite weird playing the world map as well because it it kind of takes away from the exploration side of it because like you know that if you leave Europe and like head over the Atlantic Ocean, you're going to find America. Yeah. Whereas if you just play a randomly generated map, then kind of makes it a little bit more exciting because you're out in the unknown. Yeah, I'm with you there, actually. Mm. Yeah. Were we playing a random map? when we? Yeah, yeah, it was random what we played. Cool. Yeah, I think learning the maps, maybe if, you start, if you're doing it competition, if you're, if you're doing it professionally or something like that, then maybe, uh, maybe the maps are more important. Excuse me. Um, in terms of like lifeless planets level design, I'm going to have a real go at it, I'll be honest with you. Because as I said, Ooh. there was there was five hours of me walking from one place to another, and I appreciate it was an it was an exploration game and story, but there wasn't much exploration in it. It was very linear. There was lots and lots and lots of land, but I could not be asked to go off the main path because it, I knew that there was nothing there was there was nothing there, and it there was there was no collectibles. There was no I mean even collectibles I'm, I've got a problem with, but. That, you know, at least it kind of adds a bit more. Yeah, into you, a you world. need some incentive, don't you, to kind of go off the beaten track. Yeah, if it's gonna take a lot of time out of you. And it does because you move very slow as well in that game. So the level, you know, the levels themselves, well, the the areas themselves, it was like you could see for miles, and sometimes there'd be a fence stopping you. But usually it was just a case of I can just see for miles. You know, there's no real landmarks or anything to to do. There was some interesting bits in it. <laughs> don't hold your cat by the neck. <laughs> Which one's He's that? Fine. Is that Tibbs? That's Tibbs. Bibs. 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 Um, Have you got another cat again? No, it's just the one. No, uh, it's just me being daft. <laughs> as far as uh, the level design for... Um, oh, what was it called again? Uh, Planet Explorers. Um, obviously, Lou said it's procedural, but I, I, I did actually find quite a few problems when I eventually got to start exploring. Um, there's like randomly generated mountains which I thought, fantastic, I've got a jetpack. Huh. 
right. at Scorp. We went to the mountains and then um, there was like a town, like a lake on top of the mountain, which I thought, great, this could be a nice little place to form a base. When I went into the lake, there was trees and hills and like wildlife <laughs> in the lake in the middle of this mountain. <laughs> and then, now, obviously, I, I appreciate that this is an alpha game or a pre-release uh, early access game. But still, I mean, you would have thought that there would have been something there thought, uh, hang about trees and fauna don't grow underwater on top of a mountain. The, th <laughs> the thing is, uh, as a gamer, though, you can come from it from a, like you and Sam specifically, because you haven't done any game dev, you can come from it from a completely, uh, what, I suppose it's objective view, isn't it? You, you, yep. you, even though it's an opinion, you still, you still it would expect certain quality because you've paid, paid for it. Yeah, precisely. I mean, I mean, I and it's just, I, I, I I, I'm a bit sorry. I'm a bit more <laughs> forgiving because I know how much effort goes into these games. Yeah. But I, I, you know, go on. <laughs> and I'm, 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 I am kind of torn because although I haven't made any games myself directly, I'm, I, I am familiar with the amount of work and what needs to go into in order to create these uh, these landscapes. And and also, I'm kind of torn with you, but like a part of me thinks you've released a product here mm. that you're expecting people to pay for. I mean, uh, when I went down into this lake, because they, they haven't obviously written the script for breathing yet, so you can actually just go underwater as much as you want. Uh, there was actually a, like a tunnel that went out through through the bottom of this lake, back in uh, like just a normal area. Without, uh, but you think, well, the water's in there. There's a hole. Why isn't it coming out? And the water's not coming out, right? <laughs> no, and it's yeah. that's one of the probably things. a little bit of a. Like, I know it's petty. No, no, no! It's not petty. That is, that's a, that's a pretty. It's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I play, I mean... <laughs> when I play Terraria, right? That if you if you dig underneath the sea, for example, you can, mm. unless you dig all the way down to hell, which is I think it's the underground, you, you, and you and it evaporates when it hits there. If you dig like a channel all the way down, you can empty the sea in the game, <laughs> and it's brilliant. It's, it's cool. Cause, I mean, you need to get in the sea for certain t certain things, but um, yeah. it's it's just a little it's a little cheat kind of thing to do, but. It's not early access, it's a fully released game, you know? But the, the water moves, that's my point, but you would expect it to, wouldn't you, in any game, really? Yeah. Whereas in this, it was just it was just a static element. Yeah. I'm not sure if I've got Planet Explorers. For some reason, I'm starting to think I, I might have it. Is it 2D or 3D? It's 3D. 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 It's Unity as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll have a look. I'm not sure if I've got it or not. I'd be quite interested to try it uh, with a couple of us playing together because I think that might add another element to it. Another element of ridiculousness, probably, and yeah. hilarity. <laughs> um, I don't want to get killed by 20 foot tall aliens anymore. I, I, I've had enough of that shit. And I want to drown myself. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I don't <laughs> like things that don't obey the laws of physics. <laughs> Is this some kinky fetish you've got? Or... Uh, well. Yeah. Auto asphyxiation. Yeah. <laughs> bit, a bit of underwater breath play. Moving on. <laughs> um, Shovel Knight, the level design in Shovel Knight. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty decent actually. It's it's got that each level feels quite unique with its own personality, and I like that. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of sort of quirks in the levels. There's obviously I'm trying to think. Of, there's one that's sort of in a volcano in a mountain, and it has all that kind of feel. There's obviously lava that you have to play around with and get past the obstacles. So. Uh, it has that very old school level design where each level is its own little mini adventure, hmm. which is one of the things I wanted to talk about actually. Because level design, there's so many of my favourite games. It's hard to talk about level design, like something like Metal Gear Solid, where it's the first one where it's one continuous mission. So, do you say one room is a level, or do you say the level design of the whole game? Like, so I mean, there's no real. I, th I think, I mean, yeah. It's open world games as well, you know. Some of my favourite games are open world. and it's, it's not like a level that you do. You beat a level and, and get a, a boss or whatever. We're not looking to restrict it to a, a level-based game. You know, you can talk about an yeah. open world game at the end of the day. It's still a map or a level in a game, you know. it's Yeah. It's how... I, th I think it's virtual environments, isn't it? It's probably a good way to put it. And it's also <laughs> how they approach problems. And I keep using this um, example when I talk about, for example, my, my game, Subnet, and I know it's a blatant plug, and I'm sorry about it, but um, <laughs> the game that I'm working Shapeless. on is, is very, very based on um, uh, on sneaking around, entering rooms in different ways, like very much like a Deus Ex or Dishonored type um, level design, and uh, being able to climb and and parkour on everything and anything. Now, when you mm. look at when you compare that to something like Far Cry Three, and Far Cry Three has little vines 
coming down. I think I've said this in about six podcasts that I've been on. It's got little <laughs> yeah. vines coming down to tell you where you can park or which is great. Or, mm-hmm. or ledge grab rather. But in my game that wasn't the choice I made. I made a choice to say, right, I don't want to have to do that. You can do it on everything and anything as long as the surface is flat. And again, this was influenced by Lou, um and he, he helped me kind of get get going with it as, you know, come out with the ideas and stuff. But it, it's kinda that to me is part of level design the mechanics surrounding it you know mm-hmm. uh, and do the mechanics work well you know so if we we talk about uh, assassin's creed for example again it's another game that i played lots of it's got i don't know i think it's quite a good level design but does it does it need the open world or as big a world as it's got you know it depends assassin's on which creed, assassin's creed Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> <Maybe talked. laughs> sam go go sam it de- I'll just say with Assassin's Creed, it depends on which game you look at. Simple as that. Like Assassin's Creed Two, um, I probably for my money got the best cohesive level designers. And you've got Florence. Um, there's the in between bit which I forget, and Venice. And then they're all, isn't it? Is it constant? No, no that's simple. in your, that's your one, revelations. <laughs> oh, right. Reve- I'm talking about in Assassin's Creed Two in particular. There's there's Florence. There's the in between bit, which is the sort of boaty bit. And then I can't remember what it's called. And then Venice, so that one's good. But then three and one, just some amalgamous sort of areas that I don't have much personality or anything interesting about them. So and then there's, and then there's depends the open, which game. The open area as well. I can't, I can't. I think it's that game that it's got the, the. It's a superfluous open area that connects them all together. And there's a few flags in it or something like that, but it's not very interesting. In one, it's really bad. In the first one. In the first one, right. Yeah, just loads of ready, sort of dusty-looking rocks. Whereas you look at the frontier in in three, bugs aside, the frontier, I think, is quite nice. It's quite put put together quite nicely, you know? (laughs) I actually enjoyed the frontier more than the cities in that game. Totally, Um, 100%. I was always in the frontier. Um, Yeah. But, that, yeah, so, yeah, we we can, you know, we can talk about uh, anything to do with, with the maps, you know? I was I mean, I'm probably not the best person to uh, to comment because I've only actually played two of the Assassin's Creed games, which was the first one, which I was very excited about when it came out. But the problem I had with that was uh, after doing the first city and moving along to the second city, I was just kind of thought, oh, am I back at the first city? Yeah. There was yeah. nothing to distinguish it. There was no individual features. It didn't feel different. It was essentially the same thing. You climb on top of a building, jump off into a bale of hair, you know, it, it didn't really wow me. I have mm-hmm. played uh, Black Flag, though. I actually got that free with my graphics card. Yeah, yeah. Because after the first Assassin's Creed, I was like, I was really just, I'd, I'd, I was upset with the franchise. Black Flag was different. It was a very good looking game. Mm. Um, but I don't know the mechanics of it. It just, there was something that didn't sit right with me. Well, they've all been consistently, in terms of the mechanics, uh, they've all been consistently buggy and they've all been consistently the same, <clears throat> which is good and bad, <laughs> you know. I'm not... I I have a problem with Assassin's Creed in that they keep churning out the same old shit every year. And people I'm buy sure it, There's though. so many people that say that. You know, I buy it, for fuck's sake. <laughs> exactly. I, look, I, I know, I've, the problem? I've, the thing is, I've, got four, I've completed every single one of them, apart from four so far, and I've... I've enjoyed most of them in terms of right at a point i stopped doing the side quests and i stopped doing all of the collectible stuff and i just go right i'm just going to complete the game i've had enough now i just want to see the Mm -hmm. end some of them have got a really interesting story most of them are just a bit boring uh, in general and the the characters don't seem to have much depth in my opinion um but again i mean they're working with kind of pseudo history aren't they they're not it's not based on total fact but it you know it's anyway i'm, I'm moving away from levels here um, yeah sorry <laughs> you can tell me off you know even though i'm hosting um you can tell me off for uh for rambling i'm gonna i'm gonna briefly step away because you might notice this light that's creeping over i'm gonna just switch my blinds around so the sun's not gonna be shining in my face no be a second. yeah right, while he's gone what do you think of Sam as a horse? Should we? <laughs> I think he's a bastard. Yeah, vote him off. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, level design goes for uh, for Fire Emblem, um, the levels that are in the game, the ones that I've played so far, are very nice. It's like a um, it's a top down. It's in a grid format, so there's not really a, a lot of imagination that can be put into the games. There's different terrains. Mm. There's deserts. There's grass. There's forest, and the terrains themselves affect the way that your characters move, and they affect. You know, they give you certain bonuses, defensive or attacking. One thing that kind of wound me up about it is that 
even though these levels are very, very, very simplistic in design, I mean, even, even the models in there, the 3D, it's really, really basic stuff. It looks nice, but it is very basic. In order to play more levels when you get with certain points, there's like an in-game store where the charger for these levels... And, now, and we're not talking pennies here, we're talking... Five pound, ten pound. This is a subject <laughs> for another show. We have got yes. we have got this written down, and we're talking. We we talked briefly last time about yeah. um, pay to play. Yeah, pay to play, free to play, play to win. Basically, mm. it's it's depends on what you what you what games you are playing. But yeah, we'll we'll talk about that in more detail another show. Uh, cool. Maybe even next week. To be fair, we'll figure that out. Um, right. So. Why don't we go for the uh, inevitable list of levels that we? <laughs> I actually haven't prepared this at all. I neither have I, but I still. I've got one in mind, but I'm sure we all have. Me, you, and Steve probably have the same level in mind. Um, <laughs> there is a certain one that has a place in my heart. Yes, same here. Um, so I'm going to let, let Lou go first. What we're going to do every every um, every show is we're going to have a little section where we talk about the best and worst of. A partic- of the subject, so we're going to talk now about the best three maps or levels that we have played in a game, or the- and the worst three maps and levels that we have played in a game. I'm clueless, I f- can't <laughs> think of any right now, but go on Luke, seeing as though you seemed excited about it. Well, the reason I seemed excited about it, because it, it, there seems to be a strange thing, with, with its software games, like Doom um, and Quake and Quake 2, it always seemed like the first level was the best level. The entry way. So yeah, me, 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 me and Steve used to play Link Up Doom on the PlayStation, um, just and a, we just a slight segue there. Uh, sorry, uh, interjection. The uh, do you not think that maybe the first level is the best because they put so much effort into it for the demo? Because they used to release mm. demos back then. Like look at Deus Ex. Could well be. Even though Deus Ex had loads of levels that were awesome, the first level was especially. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I'm actually going to get into one of the Deus Ex levels because I think there's a little level that's really, really good in that. Okay, fair enough. Um, but, but yeah, the, the entryway, which was Doom 2 Map 1, for some reason just worked really well as a multiplayer map. It flowed really well. It had good choke points. Um, and uh, Steve and I used to play hours and hours and hours of, um, of Link of Doom on the PlayStation on that, that level. Hang on, are we talking particular. about Quake 2 or Doom? Doom. Right, this you said is Quake Doom. 2 and then you said the entryway. Sorry, go on. Yeah, but what, what I mean is that, that in Quake 2, also you've got Quake 2 DM1, the edgeware. The, the entry, uh, it's not the entryway, the edge. Yes. Which, as far as I can tell, is the most popular map for that game. Probably ever. And probably, probably, yeah. Ever. Probably ever. Um, <laughs> but it is that, a though. great map. Um, but it just strikes me that they, these are always the first maps in the games. Um it, it's quite interesting. I said it. I think it might um, it might have something to do with the fact that old demos, when they used to release a demo, maybe the the devs put a lot of effort into those first levels, and that's why maybe. they feel better because the the love's there. I don't know. I mean, it may maybe be if just... it was like a tech demo point of view, maybe they were trying to secure funding or something, so they had to put the extra work into the initial levels. Yeah, I mean, well, it's, it's speculation at the end of the day, but yeah, yeah. The, the other theory is it's simply because they are default levels, because the first level that you see when you load the game is that level. The people just play it, and people get used to it, and people start to enjoy it. Mm. So not necessarily because it's a good level, but because it's just the default level, and that's what most people play. It's how you introduce to the game. Let's say it's a game like well, anything Quake. Doom, whatever you play that say you play a demo with it or you play the first level and maybe you die a lot so you're dying on that first level so you get to know it really well and you become you become, have affection for the game itself so that first level becomes your the point that you jumped in so you have like an affection for it even if it's not objectively the best one you might have an attachment to it that makes it your favorite that yeah it's not true of a lot of games a yeah. lot of games you can sort of go the first level was great because it was that first level that got you into it and the other ones were the challenge where the first one was like getting you into the world and the feel and all that stuff, it's yeah. the it's the memory of it, the experience. I think. I mean, I'll give another example. I'll give another example. That a lot of people will probably agree with, which is Goldeneye, uh, the facility. Mm. Mm. Um, it's the first level, list. and it's people love it. Is it really a great level, or is it just because it's the first level? Is it the nostalgia factor? Mm. It is a very interesting thing. I, um, I, I and I tell you what, I tend to when I first get a game, the first level seems to tends to be the one that I play the most because one, I go back to it a number of times if I enjoy the game 
and I don't always complete the game when I go back to a game you know I just sometimes just play the first half of the game or the first quarter or whatever um, and also I'll show friends if I'm impressed with it and I'll go back and play it again and show them from the very beginning I go look at this it's awesome you can pick up this gun and it does this or whatever and shoots people obviously and um, you know I don't know maybe it um, I th maybe it is just nostalgia I don't know because I, I, when I'm trying to think of distinctly good levels there's only one that's in my head and you've already mentioned it Quake 2 DM1 <laughs> and I wasn't a dual player in Quake I was a RA2 player and DM1 is still the best level that I mm. can think of well the other levels um, uh, those those uh, those stick in my mind because they tend to be the first levels in games but there are other ones that stick in my mind and another one is um, one of the levels from Deus Ex whenever I describe Deus Ex to someone I describe a particular level which is the I don't I can't remember which number it is or what it's called but you basically start off on the roof of a giant building and you've got to get inside the building and there's giant robots walking around the outsides of it do you know which one I mean? It's is, that the, is that when you're in France? No, no, no. It's bef is France it before is France? fairly late into the game, to be fair. It's, it's, fair, it's about three quarters of the way into the game, but basically it's a giant sort of facility. It's got some bunkers outside that you can get into, and there's robots walking around the perimeter, and you've got to find a way into the building. I think I remember that one, yeah. It's, um, I'm, it's I'm the one where you get inside there, and you've got, to, you've got to do a side mission to rescue a guy's daughter. From a like a a, um, a petrol station in the middle of nowhere. Do you not remember it? I'm obviously not the biggest <laughs> Deus fan in the world. <laughs> fan in the world, like I thought I was. Well, that level, the, the, the thing that sticks out about that level is that it was one of the the most non-linear levels I've ever played in a game. Mm. It was clearly all designed. There's no procedural genera generation in there. It's it's been designed as it is. But you can find your own way into the building. You can absolutely do whatever you want to complete the mission. And I don't think any mission in Deus Ex has such um, such kind of a, a flexibility to it in that you literally, you're deciding what to do. And yeah. now Deus Ex has that running through it, but I think that it always sticks in my mind, that mission. Uh, and... <laughs> I can see Sorry. the other Google in it now. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but Tiff it but Tiffany it is Savage. Is that how you you rescuing? Think yes, it's the mission before that. She's got some impressive leathers on her. Um, that I've just googled that, that and I've like got someone weird. It's like it's done up. Um, I'm going to see if I can show you this on. Uh... Hey, <laughs> on the stream. We're talking about this woman here. If I can show you somehow. Oh well, there we go. Anyway, over Steve's face. But yeah, um, I I can't remember. I'll be honest. I, it's such a long game, though, that I forget a lot of it. I mean, I remember that most of the France bit because I don't know. There's something about the atmosphere in that part. Uh, you know, it's dark and there's there's robots and every everywhere. And it's there's there's one particular bit where I remember coming out of a sewer and coming up into. You were in a corner um, of like a an area that's been patrolled by robots. There's. Uh, Yes, I remember. Yeah, you come um, right up in the middle and there's like guards walking around oh, outside, isn't there? It's the catacombs. You come out of the catacombs. And I yes. remember, I actually, I didn't realise until maybe about two years ago that the catacombs actually exist in France as well. They're, they're a thing and they've, they look cool as I'd love to go and see them personally. Like loads of uh, uh, well, skulls everywhere, basically all <laughs> underground and it goes for miles anyway. But wasn't, that, the... um, wasn't that Velvet Revolver video filmed in there, Slither? Mm, I think they filmed it in there. Is that yeah? There's actually skulls in the walls and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. it goes on for miles. Apparently, mm. so, I mean, I, again, I don't, I don't know for certain. I haven't been, but it's one thing I do want to go and see. Um, so yeah, I've covered kind of three of my favourite maps. Two of them are obviously from ID Games. Is that Doom Two Map One? There's Quake Two Map One, <laughs> and mm. is that that map from Deus Ex? Which yeah, it, it's it's a brilliant map, and it, it's 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 kind of indicative of the whole game really that the, you've got such freedom to do with however you want and play it however you want um is it got a, a submarine on the level that Deus no, Ex it's not. Oh, it's no it's not no it's a giant rectangular building with robots walking around outside and no, there's sort of semi semi-circular bunker buildings outside that you can get into as well I can't for the life remember. I'm sure that I'll be able to um, to edit this in into the YouTube video. Can't believe I just later on. rectangular building into Google. <laughs> 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 what, what? It's like 
Eighty thousand <laughs> results. Just... Eighty billion results. Yeah. Uh, right, so Sam, um, your turn then. Let's move on to Sam. Unless, uh, doing... unless Lou's got something to say. No? Well, I was going to uh, say worst maps, but let's let's do them oh, afterwards. We'll, we'll do the do the yeah. Go do, we're going to do good and then do bad all yeah. round. Yeah. Yeah. I said we don't have to have three as well. I mean, I was going to say it's probably better if we just stick to what we can what we can muster because I don't think I'm going to have three. <laughs> For, well, fortunately, three good ones is better because. I tend to read reviews on games, so if a game's rubbish, I don't buy it, or if, it, if it's generally perceived to be rubbish, so I'd, finding hard ones is, is hard. It's usually games that I've rented and I really struggle to remember. Anyway, good ones. I actually took a couple of notes because I'm probably going to forget them. Um, yeah, so uh, from from software, Demon Souls, which is the, the sort of precursor to, to Dark Souls, uh, the first level's called uh, Boletaria Castle, um, and basically, it's as it sounds, it's a large castle that you enter from the outside and you work your way through to the to the, to the the main castle at the, be- at the beginning. And you, the game is structured so that you go back to the levels. So it's one level that's essentially three levels stuck together. You fight three bosses to get through the levels. And it's very, the, the, the design of it is great. It's got that really old school feel. It's all, you go through loads of corridors in and out of them and it all comes back around on itself. Right. So you go in, you go in through a keep to the side to get through the main gate have to go through all this whole tower, get all these shortcuts, cut open doors, use winches to make shortcuts for yourself. Come back round, fight a boss, and you've got through the gate, which is right at the beginning. I love that, like that that design at all, so that's a great level. Um I haven't played Dark Demon Souls. It was one of those that I, it's on my list, but I'll probably yeah, never play yeah. it now. It's, it is a cracking game, but yeah, you know, there's a lot of games out there and it requires a lot of your time. It is a, a, a bare minimum a forty hour game to finish. So one of them. It's a it's a it's an action RPG. It takes a while. Uh, facility from GoldenEye. More for the multiplayer. Um, the, as a as an opening level, it was cool, but just the hours that were sunk into that again wasn't a PC gamer, so I didn't have Quake Two or any of that stuff like going on. So just the hours that we spent playing Facility, Remote Mines. <laughs> yeah, I've um, just, um, uh, I most of the levels in <laughs> GoldenEye. I mean, I didn't really have a favorite. Yeah. I'll be honest. I really like the dam as the first entry level to the game. Uh, yeah. the single player game but the, yeah the in terms of the multiplayer I could have played any of them any of them it's just got it's got quite a lot of variety yeah, yeah it's cool anyway um, and I, I really struggled to find a third one again I was talking about individual levels and world design and most of my loads of my favourite games aren't really like that but I really really like the police station from Resident Evil 2 which I guess you could call a level it's a section yeah, yeah. a section of the game I like it because of how Unlike a police station, it really is. It's like a mansion, it's, isn't it, more than anything? It's basically the mansion, but it's got some police station bits in it that are all badly arranged. Like, <laughs> it's, in a lot of ways, it's really badly put together, but that gives it a lot of charm and personality. Like, I know that police station inside out because I've played that game so much. Yeah, that's my that's my three, I think. Cool. I probably would change that tomorrow, but for today, that's my that's three. That's the thing. It's, it is such a diverse subject. I mean, it's... It, <laughs> To be fair, I'll be honest with you, we're talking about it more than I thought. I thought we'd struggle with levels and maps, but we're just not at all, are we? <laughs> um, Steve? Um, I'm Favourites. probably as unprepared as you because I wasn't actually expecting to get my webcam in time. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Very last minute, by We the did way. have a frantic like, <laughs> a frantic rush just before the uh, we went live. To That's why we were a few minutes late, if anybody cares. <laughs> yeah, blame me. Um, as far as level design goes, uh, I suppose I can't really appreciate them on s- as much as a technical level as uh, Chris and Lou can. Uh, but for me, it's about like the emotion it invokes and trying to draw you into the experience. And one of the uh, the games off the top of my head that I really remember doing that is um, a game, I think it was eventually released on consoles as well. It was called Fear, uh, First Encounter Arm Response. Oh. Uh, the second one. Uh, there was the, there's three or four now, I think. I've got Fear 2. Never played it. I don't know why I've got Fear 2, but I haven't uh, got the other I've, two. I'm sure I've got Fear 3 for the uh, for the 360, but I've never played through it. It was one of the ones I got, like, um, second-hand I picked up. But I remember on the first one specifically, um, as you're working through it, and obviously you start realising that there's people... What the hell is he doing? <laughs> he's getting his uh, Fear 2. He's getting his Fear. That's he's his get- first one. There, exactly, yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, and there's that uh, that girl um, who does have a name, and I forget it now. It begins with an M, I think. Um, Molly. She's she's quite present. But there's also a, a girl in a little red dress. And the way it's done, it's so well. Like, you'd be going somewhere, and it's drawn you... F- exactly her. Um, the designers have drawn your focus to a certain element within the game. And then, out the corner of your eye, you'll see this girl in the red dress run past. 
and you'll keep following her. And I remember one event specifically because there's no way I can forget it after it happened. <laughs> um, I was living at my parents' house at the time. Uh, Did it involve I a new played... pair of pants, perchance? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, I, I was playing with my headphones on, but because I was a bit of a tech geek at the time, I had my PC wired through uh, through my hi-fi system, which included two subwoofers. Mm. Um, I was playing this game, um, sometime stupid o'clock in the morning, about two o'clock, being a student, and I'd went down a corridor following this little girl in a red dress, and this corridor just had a closed door at the end. I walked all the way down, tried the door, wouldn't open, turned around, the door that I came through was locked. Uh, closed, sorry. I went down, tried that. That was locked as well. And when I turned around, the kind of screen flashed and there was blood on the floor dripping upwards to the ceiling. Oh. Kind of quite spookily. So I was like, right, well, that door's locked. I can only go back down and retry this one now because obviously I'm not stuck. There's a way out of this. So I walked down, opened, I tried the door. That was locked again. Turned around and this poltergeist came out of nowhere, flying at me and screamed to the point where I screamed, kicked back on my computer chair, pulled uh, the headphone mic out, of the car, which initiated all the music to come on the hi fi. At which point, my dad ran with his wife once, shouting, You're all right, you're all right. And I'm on the floor having a panic attack, <laughs> pointing at the screen, unable to like, set this together. Brilliant. So, yeah, the design on that level, I think, was fantastic, just given the effect it had on me alone. <laughs> I, I, I haven't played this game for the, that exact same reason. I think I played, I did play a demo of Fear 2, and, I, and the demo, it was really weird, because it was really, really eerie and scary, and then you got in a mech and started blowing people up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was really weird. But, I mean, this is one of them games that I could probably play with the missus, because she loves scary games, and when she's scared... I don't get scared about it. I won't be. I'd, be, I'd laugh at her, you know, if I played it downstairs. Oh, it's been a manly and, thing. Yeah. Well, no, that's the thing. That's, I don't know. That's, it's, it's, it seems to be a thing. She's the same when she's with a friend who's more scared than her. She doesn't really get scared. It's weird. But yeah, I mean, that kind of thing would haunt me for weeks, mate. It would yeah, haunt me for weeks. Yeah, that was terrifying. Oh, that dear. Was awesome. Um, another. But that's, I, that's I don't know whether we really want to call it level design. Um, because it's not strictly a level. But I remember the first time that I played uh, Grand Theft Auto 3. Uh, mm. I was just thinking you were going to say yeah. that. Yeah, because for me, that was such a big jump. You've just given and, me an idea yeah. for one of mine. Sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> and it was going from games that were... I mean, even the original Grand Theft Autos, I mean, they were open world to a certain extent, but it still felt, felt very linear. Mm. Um, with Grand Theft Auto 3, it was the first time I, I remember playing a game and just being like, right, well, what should I do? You know, uh, what yeah. do I want to do now? And it always involves prostitutes, cars, and baseball bats. But <laughs> I had an option. <laughs> yeah. And you chose yeah. prostitutes and baseball bats. Yeah. That that uh, is 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 that three or is that you know three? Three. three? That was three. Oh right? no! Oh, oh sorry, yeah. the game. <laughs> well, I'm I'm gonna. That's two, but that's enough for me for the moment. I'm, I've I've now got two. Um, the first one is Quake Two DM One. Obviously, I can't not say that. It's it's. I, I, I'd be tempted to override that with one of the RA2 maps. Um, there's a number of the RA2, uh, Rocket Arena 2 maps. That's the mod that me, Lou, and Steve used to play in a clan many, many years back. Yeah, very uh, niche now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That's why I, that's why I explained it. Um, the maps were quite large, and they were arenas, surprisingly. But there was a number of them that you could have. Um, that, that it was one big BSP map, so it was one huge map that had different arenas in it, and they weren't connected in any way. You used to use a menu to go to different areas of the map, and then you'd wait. Like some of them are dual maps, so you'd have a map a match between two people or between two teams of two. Usually, the big clan matches that we did, they were between five versus five, and they were on really big arenas. And we had we had we had bits that we could um, we had like configs that told everybody where everybody was at any time and you know it, it was quite elaborate the way we, we used to play them but a lot of those maps were very well designed for multiplayer in my eyes they were very well put together again as as Lou said good choke points good um, definition as well in terms of the, there might be an elaborate pipe structure or something that would you know would be able to we would be able to communicate between each other we're at the pipes and everyone would know where the pipes were you know it sounds a bit silly it sounds a bit arbitrary but it, it really did help when it was when it came to the actual clan play um but yeah quick 2 dm1 um my second one and that just reminded me because you said um gta3 again gta3 that was a revelation when i played it because it was the first like one one of the first like 3d games that i played it was 
fact that you had so much freedom and things like that. But I'm going to go with um, Super Mario, and I'm going to go with the first level on Super Mario because... Uh, sorry, hang on, Super Mario 64 specifically. All right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, you know what? I could list all of the Mario levels. Um, I, know I was going to pull the Chris there and get my copy out, but uh, I can't be bothered <laughs> digging through the rubble. Um, I've, got, I've got it downstairs, obviously. But yeah, the, um, the, the, the first level... It's a nostalgia thing again for me, though, because you went into the level and you got six or seven stars. I think there was a secret star on every level, and you normally got six. But you go back into it, and the level would change slightly, but only slightly. And enemies would, you know, wouldn't always be in the same places for each star. Some of the stars are extremely difficult because whole areas of the level were blocked off. And this is general th a general theme across the game. And the reason I chose, I just chose that, is because again, it gave me that initial. Wow, this is this is like a three D world, and I can go anywhere, and I've got choice. I can choose to go and do that level, or I can go and choose to do that. It's not like an open world level you see these uh, game you see these days. It's just an elaborate kind of um, map structure that takes you from one place to another, and you have to walk from one place to another. But in between the levels, um, you you could go and do little things, but there were only you know there weren't like pointless collectibles. They were actually additional stars or or you could empty the the moat and then go and get I don't know you could you can go and get Yoshi or go and see Yoshi on the top of the castle and stuff little Easter eggs and stuff in there. I'm not talking about a specific level here. I know that because yeah. it all kind of melds into one. Um, the first level in particular was interesting because it it introduced the concept. I think that's why I, I mentioned it. There, there, I'm sure there are much better levels in in that game. In fact, there are. I can think of one that. Uh, that uh, off the top of my head, which is the um, there was a San Dune level, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, they've all got individual crazy names as well. But yeah, I, I I'm going to say that as my second one. I remember the first time I seen Mario 64. I think I was with you, Lou. Uh, we were in some Chips. back street uh, computer game shop, <laughs> um, and they had an import um, N64, that, um, a Japanese one. I just remember seeing there the title screen where we've got Mario's head and the star spinning around it and seeing the shading and the changing colours. I was just like, oh my god, this really? is like amazing. This is like unprecedented. And you had so many moves as well. You had yeah. loads of choice of moves. You could jump up, you could get to the top of a tree, do a handstand and then flip yeah. off. Pointless half the time. You only used it maybe twice in the whole game. But it, it, it was revolutionary at the time. Even for PC gamers. I was a PC gamer then. I played Quake 2 before I played that game. That, for consoles, was that was the start. I think that was the start of 3D. I'm pretty sure there was there was maybe one or two games before that. I think um... Lone Soldier for the uh, PlayStation Lou. <laughs> <laughs> I bought some that of the worst level designs. <laughs> <laughs> I I bought. I was buying every magazine, like official PlayStation like magazines and so on. I buy and they were all magazine. giving it like they were all giving like one out of ten or like one out of a hundred or something. Don't buy this game. This game is the worst game ever. And I just looking at the screen, just think, how can that be bad? It looks great. It looks. <laughs> we've uh, we've got a few people in the channel, by the way, um, commenting. We've got BIA Jono saying, "Why is Lou eating a sock?" <laughs> <laughs> Not in it. And and Muta is is uh, must be hopefully he's a friend of yours, Steve. Otherwise, uh... he's a friend of ours. He's uh, Rob. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Matt Moose, right, right. Yeah. Uh, forgot how sexy Steve looks. Bless you. He's mine, <laughs> bitches. Mine, bitches. <laughs> and you look like Carl Pilkington as well. Which I don't think. See, I think that's unfair on Carl. Why is it right <laughs> that people? Well, I, I get this at work all the time. I, apparently, I look like every bald man ever. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. Any man who's ever shaved his head, I look like him. I look like every man with a beard, mate. So don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I used to have that when I had a when I when I had a beard. Don't you look like Bluto? Hey. Don't you look like Bluto? Of course, I look exactly like Bluto because I'm. I don't know. And uh, Brian Blessed, obviously, I get quite a lot as well. <laughs> Fresh horses. Gordon's alive. Gordon's alive. <laughs> People say I look like Kitty Perry. <laughs> Kitty Perry. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'm not going to tell you what I think. Without you the look makeup, like. yeah. <laughs> right. So um, that neatly, whatever that game was you just talked about, takes us on to uh, the worst games. Or the worst levels, levels, rather. Worst, worst levels. levels. Um, let's go in reverse order this time, because I still haven't got any... F Actually, no, I do have one at least decent idea. And a, 
unfortunately it goes back to Mario games and I'm going to say level 2-1 or 2-2 two, two in the Super in Super Mario Brothers it's the water level the very oh. first water level that I, and it was oh my god I've got actually got a second one actually uh, it's just popped in my head um, the water level just because water levels there's no other reason for it it's mm -hmm. water levels just should not exist in games unless yeah. unless they're really I don't know there should you think that swimming around in water would be relaxing, but it's just not because you can't. You've got used to the control <laughs> system in the game, and then you get plunked in some water, and it's all out the window. Chris, Chris, hang on. Swimming around in water is fine. Being like at the bottom of the sea floor in the Challenger Deep, that sucks. Right. <laughs> Which oh. is what these games do. I mean, it, the, oh, right. the, the water level. <laughs> <laughs> the water levels are in, uh, ubiquitous for these platformers. I mean, Sonic, every Sonic game has a water level where you've got to belch those bastard bubbles. Uh, I quite like those, though. I don't. I, I really don't. I don't like the stress of, oh, I'm going to drown, I'm going to drown, I'm going to drown. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No. It is stressful, but it's... There's, do you know what, though? Sonic 3 had a mint one, though, because I think it's Hydro City. And it's yep. got loads of water in it, but there's loads of bits where if you get up to a really good speed, Sonic runs on the surface of the water. That yeah. makes he it all worth it. He bounces across it, doesn't he? He bounces across it. No, he it, just yeah. runs straight over. He just, drrr, just runs and there's oh, a big yeah. like water thing coming out the back. It's like, that's so cool. It makes Great up music the stress of the water. As well. Great music on that level. By Mr. Jackson. <laughs> 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 as we discussed last time. <laughs> But yeah, sorry, carry on. <laughs> uh, no, no, I was, I was just trying to look up the, the details surrounding my second one. Um, the second one, actually, we've already mentioned the game, Goldeneye, and it's the jungle level where you meet, where you, the second time that you see Xena on a top. And it's actually where you kill her, I think, isn't it? It's, you kill I forgot her about that bridge. level. I hated that level. I remember it being one of the first ones where I was so frustrated to the point of of like nearly snapping my control pad that it was horrible because you couldn't see the enemies because again you'd kind of got used to the fact that all right i have to sneak around the corner a little bit shoot him and then run off and you know it's kind of you, you you get a style and then you get thrown in this jungle level but jungle levels are another one of those that are a bit of a trope in games a jungle yeah. or forest levels rather and they're always quite difficult well, they used to be quite difficult i think these days they seem to have got it nailed like i, I think of games like crisis um yeah, the, the original the, Crisis has Far got, Cry and Crisis have got it well, well sorted out I now. was just watching someone stream Far Cry 3 again today and it just really made me want to play it because it's such a good it game. Is cool. It is cool. It comes cool. out soon, doesn't it? Does it? I, I need to play Blood Dragon, actually. End of the year. I'm looking forward yeah, to I like it. Blood Dragon, but anyway, yeah. yeah. So, was that two for you? Did you want a third? That's two. Um, I can't think of any, any others. I mean, there's lots of bad levels. I mean, <laughs> I tell you... I'm, I'm how are we defining a bad level here? I it's mean, how you. are we defining a good level? It's up to you. Well, well we've, we've talked about nostalgia. We've talked about good mechanics in get you know, a level being... Um, uh, what's the word? The, complementing the mechanics, you mm. know? We, we've talked about levels that are good for multiplayer. It's up to you how you want to define it. It's Yeah, it's I mean, it's, strike, it's just strike me just listening to the conversation. And I, I wasn't aware that, that I... Um, I'd share views so well with you guys, but it does strike me that, that nostalgia is almost the primary thing here. Mm. It's like the first levels. It's you know, there's there's something in it's it's not so much that the, the level leaves an impression, but it through f pure force of playing it lots, it sticks in your mind. And well, that's yeah, makes sense that. because if if you really enjoy playing a game. And you have a good experience of it. The first level is the first thing you associate with that good experience. So exactly. it's always exactly. going to be called up in fond memories. It doesn't take anything away from the game, I think. Well, here's a challenge. How about we find a first level in a game that we didn't like and we, we persevered with and then liked the game? It'd be intro to um, Oblivion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty shit. That, <laughs> what that, happens in Oblivion? The you, you walk around with Captain Picard and wait for him to die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's that was a, annoying. I argue that the Morrowind intro is worse than that. Uh, they come off a boat on Morrowind, then you're pretty yeah. much in a yeah. world, aren't you? And, yeah, then, you, and then a, a Khajiit lands on you, if you go around the right path, anyway. <laughs> it's, no, it's a guy, isn't it? It's the guy with the boots of blinding speed, or, not the no, Icarus? No, he's, he's the, the one that jumps for my... <laughs> it's the scrolls, he's got loads of them jump That's scrolls it, on yeah, him. Yeah, and it is yeah. a, I'm sure it's a Khajiit that does that. Is it? I'm I sure remember. it is. I thought, I thought it was a guy. Sounds like a Khajiit thing to do, doesn't it? Jumping around with that. <laughs> Jumping around, not okay, people. Not giving a damn what they're doing. So they do the, the cat, the cats. The cats, they jump around, you know? Yeah. Bad level design. I love the Khajiit, man. They're awesome. There's, uh, there's one that instantly springs to mind. 
Go on, Steve, it's your right. turn. Uh, the, the library level on here. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Is I forgot forgotten that one as well. Is that the one with the swarm? The flood, yeah. That, yeah, the flood, flood. Yeah, sorry. flood. Oh, but it's just relentless, but it doesn't change. Yes, and it's boring. Mm. Yeah, I'm up for a challenge, because that's what, you know, part of the point of playing these games is. But when it's just turn around the corner, the scenery is the same, the enemies are the same. Oh, look, the another big blue same. door. The same. Yeah, and you're like, yep. okay, I'm going to have to wait here again. Oh, we're there, three, two, one, here comes another horde. Yeah. Just annoying, and it can't, the rest of the game was that nice in comparison, whereas it comes to, like, uh, the scenery, well, just the environment that you're in and the experience of the whole thing. It just seems like it was hashed together and they couldn't really be bothered with it. It's I like, oh yeah, just do the same thing and multiply it. I think they were trying to go for um, more frantic and kind of uh, up, you know, uptight gameplay at that point, but they just failed miserably at it. I don't think anybody likes that level, though. I think no. it's a consistent thing. It is, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it, uh, that's an interesting point that Steve brings up, is that compared to the other levels, compared to stuff like Silent Cartographer, which is a beautiful Fantastic level... level. A beautifully designed level. It looks great. It plays great. Um, if you don't know which one that is, that's the one where the it's, circ it's a circular island, and there's 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 basically two entrances on either side into yeah. the interior of the island, and you basically ride around the island in a warthog, and warthog. there's kind of beaches yes, and everything like that. Yes. Unbelievably beautiful level. Well, even the approach to the islands when you're on the back of the pelican and you're flying up to it, it's just like the cinematics of the whole thing were fantastic. Yeah. Now, look, I think Sam is aware of my problem with Halo, and I know it's a little segue again, but my problem with Halo is that you still can't ride the fucking pelicans. Unless they've done that in <laughs> 4, because I haven't played 4. No, you As can. in uh, control them. Sorry. Think so. As in control well, them. Control them or be in them and do things, you know, like go, go yeah. in and out of them in the multiplayer or something. I know you've no, got, they've got some flying before. vehicles and that. Now. There is a section where you do fly. Is, is, is it a longsword or is it a pelican in 4 that you fly? So, it's a long sword, I think. Is it a long sword? Because well, you have to fly around. Uh. I don't think it's a pelican anyway. anyway. But yeah, you, you <laughs> should completely be able to fly them. That'd, that uh, it's like, I remember stick. the first game, I was like, oh, you can get in warthogs, that's amazing. From my experience, I believe Halo was one of the first games, again, that had vehicles in it that I could mm. I could actually get into that was weren't bugged to shit, you know? <laughs> God, there was a game called Red Baron that we played at a LAN party. Do you remember that? With the blimps. Was it called Red, Red? Baron? No, that was um, Operation. Um, sorry, but uh, oh, it was the one that came before Battlefield 1942, isn't it? It yeah. was made by the same company, Dice. Is um. Was it the same company? Are you sure it wasn't like? Yeah, a... John, John Owen Chat will know this because he used to play the hell out of it. Um, wh wh whoever it was, Biggs and that is that is that the same yeah. John Owen you're talking right? Yeah. So our friends at LAN parties, they they basically had. Um, they, they, they introduced us to this game. I'm sure it was called Red Codename Baron. Codename Eagle. Codename there Eagle. There you go, yes. And I, to, I remember falling through the floor of the blimps in that. So you get in a blimp, <laughs> fly off with about six people in it, and everyone would just fucking fall through the floor. <laughs> it was brilliant. Uh, terrible, but brilliant. But those are the kind of games I really enjoyed. You know, I was I was a big fan of Battlezone 2, for God's sake, that I keep going on about. And I loved it, but nobody else liked it. Because <clears throat> there was a few <laughs> bugs in it. You know, well, I say I say that's why, but I don't I don't actually know why people. It was the same that. with tribes, though. That never really took off, did it? No, and again, there's a few of us that really enjoy playing tribes multiplayer, but getting everyone to play it and not be upset with the fact that the base would be destroyed in ten seconds was because you, you invisible bastard, was sat in there. <laughs> it's only because we played spewing grenades out of your tits. <laughs> it's, only, it's, only because, it's only because we played like that infiltrator mod or renegade mod. That was it, renegade. renegade. That was brilliant. That it's uh... Anyway, yeah, so we're, again, we're getting off track here, but... Yeah, uh, oh, there's, there's my third, my third favourite, Scarabray on... Um, Scarabray? I was just going to say tribes. that. On <laughs> multi, multiplayer map, two big, massive bases separated by um, a, a wide area of terrain with two tiny, tiny little towers in it, or one tower. Was there one tower in the middle? Scarabray? It was uh, one in the middle, I think. But that, yeah. was, that was another one where there was multiple ways to get in each of the bases, and you had to be quite clever if you were defending, and you had to be quite clever if you were attacking... Or if you were me, you just turn invisible and destroyed everybody. <clears throat> yeah, bastard. <laughs> but I, again, um, I, go on. Sorry, Steve. I was. <laughs> well, I was going to go on my next bad level, but have you got something else to say? No, no, no. Go on, go on. Next bad level. Um, this is not so much a level, but like a part of a game that keeps yeah, yeah. repeating. Um, Mass Effect. It's a franchise that I adore. I love Mass Effect. Uh, but in the first Mass Effect, the Mako levels. Where you uh, land on the planet, 
and you had to drive around oh, in that vehicle. Th they were pointless, weren't they? There was, you had to collect resources. You needed to in order to progress through the game. And there was uh, certain bonuses and secret things you could pick up. But in order to do that, you had to drive this crappy vehicle right round the map because you could only <laughs> detect them once you got within a certain radius. Yeah. And it was just so long and laborious. It, uh, that, that was, that's what Lifeless Planet is about. That's basically Lifeless Planet. That, 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 apart from you don't have a vehicle and you walk slow uh, as shit. <laughs> it, it turns out, by the way, I've just done a little bit of reading on that, and it's one guy developing that, so that probably Eagle. explains why. No, the, um, the the lifeless planet that you played. Right, right. One guy basically doing that. I said it's it's, uh. a, it's it's okay. It's just that the the sections between the in, interesting bits are way too big, way too long. That's my main criticism of it. The story would be okay if it was a bit more condensed, uh, like that. Right. Um, is that three C or? That's two, but that's all I've got. Cool. Sam? Yeah, I think I've only got two and then just an idea that I detest. So I'll do the idea first. Yeah. <laughs> ice levels where you, you, you have to slide around on ice. It's, is I that another thing with the mechanics, though, that you've already got used to how to control it? And... Yes, but it's every... Like, you know what it is, right? Um, I can go for a <laughs> swim in the sea, and I can have a pretty good... Like, water levels can be fun. There are a few good ones, because, you know... The concept in the real world of me walking down the road and then jumping into the sea. I can have a laugh in the sea, it's all right. Ice is always a pain in the balls. <laughs> it's, a pain, it's, a, it's, a pain, it's a pain in the balls in the real world. It's a pain in the balls in the computer game world. I hate them. <laughs> Every time they come up, it's like, right, here's a platform. Oh, no, I've got to stop 18 min like, metres early so I don't fall off the end and die 70,000 times. I hate them. It just get on my nerves. Right, so we've established so, water levels, ice levels, and jungle levels can fuck off. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> what about yeah. Lava although, levels? although uh, Metal Gear Solid Three was loads of jungle levels, and that was great. So. Well, you needed the jungle, though, didn't you? But but the problem I have with Metal Gear Solid Three, by the way, even though I am a fanboy of Metal Gear Solid, is the fucking camo. Having to change your camo, go into the menu every five seconds and change your camo. Do you not remember that? Yeah, a li little bit laborious. That's why they brought the Octo Cabo in for four, which and was much brilliant, better. Brilliant decision, but yeah. Much better. Screw through. Can, um, I, uh, can I add a point onto Sam's uh, yeah, yeah. idea there? You lava see? levels. I like <laughs> lava levels. <clears throat> they can be, they can be pretty, there's one in Shovel Knight that's actually really awesome. Um, a lava level. It's, I call. it's just, you would be walking around in this shaft of lava will appear from nowhere, go straight through the whole map, and then disappear again like nothing's happened. Which, Wait, well, which no, game are you Mar thinking Mar specifically there? Oh, That's pick Marvel's any of the Mario Sonic. levels. A lot of them. Oh, yeah. Sonic levels, you know, any of the sideways scroll them 16 bit platformers, basically. Yeah, I'm so not a fan. Of, I'm, 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 not, I'm not a massive. I'm not massively averse to lava and levels. I think that lava is, is, is in the levels that are there for the pros, let's say. People, people in first person shooters in, in multiplayer games would always complain about lava levels if they were shit. If they were not shit, then they enjoyed them. Because you could knock the shit people into the lava. <laughs> <laughs> I never oh, had a problem with lava quick games two, on uh, quick first, two DM2. Um, first person. Ah, ah, quick 2 oh. DM2. Oh. <laughs> yeah. that, I quite like that level. I know it, was it was DM3 with the lava. Was it DM3? So. Oh, DM3 God. with, the, with the, the, the pipe that you could trap people in. I'm so old. I don't really I think, remember what I enjoy anymore. <clears throat> I think my gripe with lava levels applies specifically to uh, sideways scrolling, third person. Because right. I, I never had a problem with first person lava. Mm. Mm. Although it did, it did make me laugh. Like, I, I, if, if we were having a particularly like, intense match on DM3, on Quake 2 DM3, I'd, and, we, and people were just falling into the lava constantly. Especially, or oh, <laughs> Eric 11, for God's sake. I know that's, Eric 11. that's very niche to our group of people, but we, we took a map that was absolutely terrible from uh, Cranky Steve's um, Haunted Whore House your Haunted Whore House or whatever it was <laughs> uh, which was, uh, it was on somethingawful.com it was an old website that used to like parody it was a parody review website that that reviewed crap maps for Quake and Quake 2 and uh, we, we took one of these called Eric 11 and I made it worse and it was <laughs> I, I, we had so much fun on that that. Let's just be clear. You you tried to make it better, and it just no, turned out worse no, anyway. I, I didn't say I, tr I tried to make it worse. I made it worse. That's my thought. <laughs> <laughs> but we still had loads of fun because the spawns were in the wrong place, so you'd be holding W most of the time. The spawns in Quake were quite quick, so you'd spawn immediately and jump straight off the edge. And just <laughs> got, ah! lava. But the lava was black as well. It was just black. It was not lava. It was just just hurting. just hot death. Yeah, just hot, hot death. death. <laughs> That's been. 
Um, <laughs> Go on then, you two, you two. Um, right. Uh, yeah. So, does anyone remember Battletoads, which I think was on the NES and the Mega Drive? I don't know. I've played it. I don't know. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles kind of rip-off thing where they would like a side scrolling beat them up where they would you do a punch, 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 and then for some reason your fists would get massive. Massive. Every now and yeah. then. <laughs> Uh, it was kind of, just it, suddenly go on steroids for like one punch yeah, and then shrink back to normal size. It was kind of cool, you know. You do that level, and there's a first level where you're jumping around, hitting stuff with pipes, and that it's like yeah. And then you do another level where you you're going down like a chasm and you're swinging and hitting stuff, oh, and you're I like, yeah, that's that, pretty yeah. cool. Then yeah. you get to the bike level, <laughs> and it all goes wrong, <laughs> right? So you're going on this bike thing. Uh, so if you look at my screen, I'm sort of doing. You're all sort of here, and there's stuff coming at you, and it flashes when it's going to appear. Then it's there, and you're just into it. So you got to like, jump over walls, avoid things on this massively fast speeder bike, like the speeder bikes from um, Return of the Jedi. And it's the third level in the game, and I must have tried to get past it. Oh, I, 50 to, I never could get past it. It was awful. I've just, it was uh, so awful. I've just put a picture of the uh, the massive fist on uh, on Battletoads. It's not very big, though, unfortunately. You can't see it. But... <laughs> does, yeah. does this actually remind me, um, does... does uh... There's a game, this is going to get really niche again, but there's a game for the Sinclair Spectrum and probably some of the other 8-bits called Navy Moves, <laughs> where you basically, you're a Navy guy and you've got to do you move. Navy things. You move. Yeah, you, yeah. you move. <laughs> now, the, it's, it's actually a really clever, really well done game, but no one has ever played it. And the reason no one's ever played it is because the first level, you're in a dinghy and you're on rough seas and you've got to jump over mines. But the jump timing is such that basically one pixel too far or one pixel too short and you die. I don't think anyone in the entire world has ever completed that map. No. It's it's impossible. I, I've played it I've hundred played it hundreds of times and I've never ever finished it. What's it called again? Navy moves. Navy moves. Yes. There was also an army moves, which was a little easier. <laughs> they don't thought of a better, a better like sub. What's the word I'm looking for? A, a better word than moves. Just moves. Uh, I think it was a. I think it was a Spanish company called Dynamic that made it, and uh, they were uh, known for basically was. making really, really hard games. I've, I've, again, I've got a picture up of of a parody someone's done. You'll see it in thirty seconds or so. Uh, Navy moves front cover with the commando. Like Schwarzenegger Commando front cover. Yeah, and it it's is. Basically, yeah. a rip off of it. <laughs> yeah, hey. that's not a parody. That's what used to happen in the eighties. It just used to rip off anything. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't matter. No one cared. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh, I'll tell you what. I've just thought of my third. My does, uh, did I already get a third worst one? No, it was the best one, wasn't it? Third worst one. I would say the entire game of Mission Impossible on the Commodore sixty four. The original one. Everything about that game was hard and impossible and pointless. The, it would be, the Mission Impossible has got to be fucking hard, hasn't it? Well, yeah, good point. But <laughs> it was just... It, and, and anything in them old games with a ladder that you just could not get up. You could not press up at the right time. You have to be within a pixel to press up at the ladder to get up it. That was it. That's, I suppose that's a trope rather than a level, but... Generally, that was the, <laughs> that was terrible back in the day. Right. Um, um, another uh, one from it. I've only done one. No, I did one as a concept. Yeah, well, I was going to say, you kind of reminded me of one that I, that I forgot that I hated when you were talking <laughs> about GoldenEye. Talking about the jungle, and I was like, yeah, the jungle was pretty bad. But I think the level just before it or just after it, the train, oh, just, God, yeah. just awful. Just I mean, you're playing that on double O agent difficulty, the hardest level in the game. You literally peek out by the corner, it's just dead. You're just like, I can't get, I can't shoot you, because by the time I even look like half an inch around the corner, I've already been shot. It just drove me mental. I have like, to say that I so never annoying. completed that game on 007. I tried, and I got, oh, I, got to a, I got to some level that I just couldn't do, and I can't remember which one it was. Could have been the train, I don't know. That, that, late, that level, it's just, it was unfair. It really felt unfair. Like, you had to sort of, I thought you had to get lucky to beat it, and I hate that. I hate when you have to win by just if you do it enough times eventually you'll get through and look I hate that and that's what that level felt like to that's, me you're just getting blasted in little tight corridors do, do any of you do all you guys have like a toilet game that you play on your mobile when you're on the loo that my 3DS has kind of mm. taken up that right. oh. I've got I've got one of my t well I've got a tablet in the toilet and I'm playing Candy Crush at the moment Right, I, I know it's it's not a real gamers game and I'm sorry for mentioning it on such a serious podcast but you know it, it, 
that is very, very luck based. After a certain point, it's just like I mean, I'm spending. I'm not spending any money on it, but I'm spending so many lives trying to get past a single level, and and it's just total luck that I get past it, you know. And I, I see where you're coming from with it. That was my point. Mm. Completely different type of game, but but the same problem applies. You're getting by on luck. <laughs> it's not. You didn't beat it, did you? You just you just happened to get past it. Yeah, it, yeah. You know I what didn't I mean? Feel it's feel any like... satisfaction from complete. Yeah, it, yeah. I don't you like lost a passenger in the game instead of actually taking. Exactly. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I think. I think. To be fair, the games like Candy Crush, they do that on purpose to make you spend money. And oh, again, we're going into the free-to-play stuff, but we'll. <laughs> we can't avoid that. We can't, can we? Because it's such a, <laughs> you such a massive chip on the shoulder about it that they just want to get it off. Yeah. Right, Sam. Thanks. You're done. You don't have to talk for the rest He's of the podcast. No one left, I think. No, he hasn't. Does he? No, I did. Uh, I could do one. I did. I did one concept, which is ice level, so that counts as one. I think. It's, hard. it's all right. If well, you've got, 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 got another, another one, one. Go on. just um, have you ever played Rayman Origins, which is like uh, no, it's, it's on my it's list. Just, it's on my list. I it's think pretty, I have played it. Yeah, it's a pretty cool game. Like lovely to look at and all that. But there's these bonus levels. It's obviously it's a two D side scrolling game. Got some cool mechanics in it. A lot of frustrating bits though. There's a lot of sections where you have to. There's a, there's these bonus levels in particular. Where you're chasing after like something, and when you get when you get to the level, you get it, and it's a bonus item, and it's just it's just a, an obstacle course where the screen's moving constantly. You've got to go along, and you've just got to be perfect, or, to, scroll, or, or you, you die. And they're just the bonus levels for Rayman Origins. They just um, I don't know if they're anything in particular. I can't remember, but they just annoyed the hell out of me. Like the levels themselves were quite good fun. Every time you got to these bonus levels, you're just like, right, I'll just keep dying. Right, I didn't see that coming. That wasn't fair, so I'm dead. Like you've got, you know, it gets to there to there, and you've not had time to react, so you just have to memorize the level, which again, that's, not fun. It's an old school trait. That though, that's what mm. that's. What I don't like it. Games used to do, and and that's why they were hard, and that's why Rayman Origins is probably called Origins. I would imagine because it's it's like they used to be. Everything was pre-scripted. Everything there was nothing really procedural apart from maybe some of the older roguelikes and you know things like that. Well, rogue. <laughs> for example, oh um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's like yeah, I, 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 there's there's a certain place for them, and the the you have to enter them these days with with the mind that I'm not going to complete this. I, I'm not. I, it's so hard. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not actually going to get past the sixth level or something. You know. Mm. Well, what's interesting here is that that no one's really brought up any of the open world games for in terms of level design or in terms of world design. I um, thought that was going to be a tangential issue that we talk about separately, because well, I've got a few I can talk about, but none of them. It's not like I well, can just say. You know what? I'm going to. I've got one, and I've mentioned. I mentioned it three times today, for God's sake, because um, it's one of my main big bugbears, and I think uh, Sam has the same. La Noir, the game, does mm. not need the open world. It, one of the biggest open worlds I've ever seen of just. Bland nothing. city, there's, city. No, there's nothing in it. I think there's, I think there's a few little collectibles and stuff, but they're so far apart from each other, and, uh, and there's so you would much. Never find them. So much effort gone into it when you can literally get in a car, press a button, and you're at the next mission, and you don't need to see any of the worlds. So there's only like a few missions where there's a chase going on, but that could easily be like the the scripted. You know that there could easily be a set path. Just with, a level, yeah. Yeah. I, I, just what's the point? I think that's probably why one of the main reasons that game, you know, maybe didn't do as well as it could have done. Yeah, because it had some genuinely great things in that game. The mechanics, some bits of it were genuinely brilliant. Yeah, and the, and the facial, the facial stuff was awesome in it. I mean, it was. It, was it looked class. like people. Have any, have any of you guys seen Mad Men? The series, uh, yeah, I, I, I one or two it. episodes. Okay, I've watched quite a lot of them. I think I'm on the fifth season, and I've had enough now. It's boring. I got bored of it. I got yeah, bored of it. It's not a brilliant. I mean, it's it's just a little bit self indulgent. I'll be honest. The whole the whole this, thing. The characters. We should talk about Batman. No, That's we shouldn't. Batman. But anyway, <laughs> the point is, is that a lot of the characters in that are in LA, yeah, Bar, them, and they look them. just like them, and they speak just like them. They have the same mannerisms. The facial stuff's pretty good. It's you know you can still tell it's computer graphics, but it's very very good, and I don't. They used they wrote their own facial recognition uh, facial system. I can't remember what it's called now, but uh, I mean the studio went under for other reasons, I believe. Um, but yeah, Eleanor was brilliant, brilliant ideas in the game. Awesome, like detective parts. Awesome, like mm. uh, discovering clues. And it um, reminds me. Have you ever played Heavy Rain? I think Sam's played Heavy Rain. But have you guys? 
Yeah. Heavy Rain's yep. another one of those detective games. It had the same kind of mechanic as that, but you could also interrogate people, and there was a little bit more depth in terms of uh, the actual like investigation parts. Although, to a point, you start... At one point, you start realising, right, I just need to listen for the right tone when I come near a, like yeah. a, an item that's relevant to the story, you know? Um, and it gets a little bit repetitive, I think. I mean, I, have, I think I'm probably about two missions off the end and I've given up with it again, just because it's repetitive, you know? Anyway. So, Lou. What were we talking about? <laughs> Lou, we are talking about the uh, worst maps and levels. So you right. have a perfect opportunity to talk about open world stuff if you want to. Right, yeah. Um, well, it was just interesting, really, that, that no one had picked up on some of the some of the maps for their favourites. Like, no one had mentioned the um, the the level. The, sorry, the world in um, Grand Theft Auto games, for instance, or Skyrim. Uh, I could go on for about those for a while, but maybe after this. I mean, uh, maybe the maybe the maybe the perception is that they're not maps, they're not levels, they're they they're, they're worlds, and that's a different thing entirely. Sam asked me just before yeah. the podcast actually if we were if we were talking about maps, like as in the the idea of the map or the 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 mechanic of the map, or yeah. is it open world, or are we talking about specific levels? But that's the that's the idea of a discussion. We're open to yeah whatever you. Think. I, th I think in terms of worst levels, I mean you've already covered quite a few of the my. Ones that I don't like. I mean, I think another one from Sonic Three would be um, uh, the Egyptian themed level. Um, In Sonic I Three, that one Sonic Three. I think it was Sonic and Knuckles, actually, possibly. Um, oh, is that where you go into the? You're uh, inside into the a pyramid, pyramid and just ghosts yeah. in there and stuff. Yeah, basically, you're inside a pyramid, yeah. and basically, every so often, the lights start to dim, and you've got to pull mm. a big lever to light the pyramid up again. And if you don't, ghosts start to appear and just attack you. Yeah. And they're, they're basically, they they this fixed to the screen, so they're like hovering around like this, and they just start attacking you and killing you. It's just yeah. one awful level. It it reminds me of the the ward levels, and that you've it's basically a normal level that every so often you've got to pr do something, press a button to make it so you don't die. And it's yeah. just such an awful mechanic. It's like such a lazy, mm. horrible mechanic. Because they're just arbitrarily placed around the level, probably as well. The the, but no, the, switches. The, the, the switches are yeah. The switches are placed all over the place. But it's the fact that it is literally a case of press a button every thirty seconds or you die. It's it's just not a fun mechanic. There's a few other games that, that I can't think of the top of my head, but I, I remember I, that kind of mechanic. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not keen on that either. Yeah. Okay. What what next? Um. Uh, I can't really think of any of the really terrible levels. That's that's one of the. Um, I've been trying. I've been sat thinking, and you've really meant you've all mentioned stuff that I realised I don't like, like the ice levels. We, the te we tend to have focused on tropes more than anything, haven't we? Like ideas and things. Yeah, ideas and mechanics. But they, they, I mean, these are, these are sort these are sort of things that have been kind of widely replicated throughout the games that we've played. But why do they keep doing it? Why do they keep making bad ice levels and bad lava levels and bad <laughs> Is it just jungle levels, you know? It's like a lack of imagination. They get to a certain point and think, oh, we need to switch things up a bit. Ah, ice level. But why? Yeah, I mean, I understand that an ice level is obviously, you get used to the mechanics and then you're supposed to, uh, so you get used to your own movement of the character and you're supposed to uh, adjust that with the ice and it's a challenge. I get that it's supposed to be a challenge. It's not an enjoyable one, that's my issue with it. it gen generally... <laughs> And maybe it could yeah. be done well, but there's just this, this, this sort of putting your brakes on early kind of thing. It's not good. It's not. No one enjoys that, really. I don't think. <laughs> I, I, I don't. don't know. Know. I wouldn't even say that it's um, it's that. I mean, it feels almost like they've they've made say a, a platform game like Sonic, and they've come up with all these ideas for zones. And it's like, what can we do that's a bit different for this zone? <laughs> and then there's a, there's a committee meeting where the, everyone thinks, well, what can we do? Can we have slidey floor? Can we have, can we have it so that you fall off into lava? Can we do something different with this level? And that's what com keeps coming up. It's the water level. It's the press the button or you don't die level. It's the slide on the floor and fly into some bloody spikes level. And there's only so many ideas you can have like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it does feel like a committee thing. It's almost like like, okay, we've got 75% of this game done now and we've run out of ideas like what have we got left we've got the slidey floor that's, idea yeah that's what I was thinking earlier about like the first level being cool maybe it actually is good and they just got bored you know maybe mm. it just declines the further on you go but then again I, I know there's some final levels that are amazing but maybe that's the thing again they're, they're aiming for maybe uh, 
like a blockbuster classic, you know, where you've got a start, middle, and end, and the middle's a little bit slower paced, and then the end is more the three acts. Your... Sort of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe the. I mean, when I've been doing my game design, I've been basing the story uh, and pacing it based on what you would normally do in as you're writing a blockbuster script, because mm. that's the kind of game that I'm going for. But it doesn't work all the time, you know? I think one one that's sprung to mind there, and I know I'm going back to games with, with good levels here, but the, but it really I feel like this has to be mentioned, is the um the last level of Doom Three. Has anyone played through Doom Three right to the end? Doom I have no, it was, I was shit scared. But of it, it was man. first released. <laughs> Swear to God. Well, I played through it's, I've already played through it once, but I remember basically the, you play through the game and it's all kind of it's it's dark corridors in a space station or dark corridors in, in um like a, a facility on Mars, but the last level you basically have to. F- um, I'm going to put my finger up and say the spoilers here, but you got to face off against a boss. Oh, oh my God! What? And there's a boss at the end of the game. <laughs> That's it. Shit, you're not. <laughs> you know we have to wait a little bit and tell people that the, what what the finger's for as well. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's spoilers here. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go this... through. It. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that everyone has played this game by now, and I know that you, some of you guys haven't. I put, don't care. Do I'm not bothered. No. Not bothered. Basically, you be, you're walking through this level, and there's no enemies, but there's a noise, a constant thudding noise. Now, if you played the original Doom. You remember there's, there's certain enemies in that that really stand out. The cyber demon being the main one. This huge shambling demon with like hooves and horns and stuff. Spider Man. But you don't as well. Yeah, you don't see you don't see anything like that throughout the game. And then on the last level, you're basically walking through all this 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 kind of hell themed level, and all you can hear is this this clunk noise of hoof. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You can hear hooves. And it it builds it up so well. I've never there's there's few games I've played where my heart rate has been like I've been able to feel my heart pounding because it really builds it up well. The Are you talking about is, good levels or bad levels now? Well this is a good, good level, but it's yeah. good because it's not it it's not good because it's the first level. It's not good because of nostalgia so much. It's good because it's it the, the scene is set so well. It's like um, we mentioned earlier on about fear. Just actually by putting you in the game, like in a mindset that much, that something can frighten you. And something that you know, you're sensible, and you think, well, this is obviously virtual. But it can have that much of a profound effect on you. I, I can't play those kind of games because I get I, I don't get panic attacks, but I, I, I just won't sleep. I cannot. It stays in you my head. You get wound up with it. But, mm. you know, I, one thing you mentioned earlier about that uh, that fear thing where you went to the door and then you went back and then you went to the door and mm. you went back, that is more powerful in one little corridor than it is, than, than, than entire levels in other games. Yeah. The fact mm. that you've just, you, you've got, Maybe three, three or four different things that happen in this tiny little room, and it's set in the atmosphere. I bet the music's really good, the ambient noises are really good, and I bet it, it's that is that that's a level design to me. Yeah, it's yep. not a level that you would, you know, it's not a typical level that you would expect to play in Call of Duty or something like that, but it's still a level design. Yeah, it's it's a scene setter, and it's it's. I know, I know, we're kind of taking things off slightly away from the the crap maps here. I think, but oh, I think no, this is no. important. Um, the, the, I'm sure that all of you have played Unreal. Or certainly, uh, I know, Steve, and you have, Chris. Uh, I don't know if Sam's played it, the I, original Unreal. I, I maybe did play it on the Friends PC when it first came out, the first one. I never got yeah. past the first level of Unreal 1. Uh, <gasps> well, you don't need to. I don't know maybe. if I did, actually. There's two of the best parts in the game are actually on the first level. I know level. what you're going to talk about. Yeah. Um, the, the, you're walking through the ship, and you've, you've, you're kind of setting the scene. This, this, this giant ship has crashed on an alien planet, and everyone's died. And it was a prison ship, and you've escaped from your cell. And you're walking along, and then you get up to a door that's kind of half closed. And suddenly you hear like a scream, and the door closes almost all the way down. Um, and you hear like a, a, an alien sort of voice, some gunshots, and you see some flashing from under the door. And then as the door lifts up, there's like blood squirts out the door at you, and you see an that, alien yeah. running off. It's an amazing scene setter, and then later on, you're in a corridor, and you walk along the corridor, and suddenly, the end of the corridor, the door closes, and then you turn around, and the other door closes, and all the lights get turned off one by one, and then you've got to fight this alien that you saw earlier in this dark corridor, and it sets the scene so well, and it's not really a cutscene, in the sense of you've got, uh, you, you jump outside the camera, uh, uh, sorry, outside of the camera of the player, and you're watching it. You you're inside the scene. You're controlling the scene, but the scene is playing out like a cutscene, 
Mm. And you don't do, see that enough in games. Do you not? Do you not think that that just that just rung a bell in my head about um, System Shock Two? Oh, I was yeah. going to say, I was gonna say Bioshock. Oh, well, well, Bioshock. That's got pretty much the sim- same thing. Yeah, it's got the similar kind of feel to it. I mean, I can't remember the specifics about Sh- System Shock Two. I need to play that again at some point. I remember it was shit scary. I remember absolutely it being really shit ambient, scary. And I remember being quite scared, but it wasn't as scary as a game like Fear to me. I, d- I could play it without worrying about things afterwards, you know. But yeah, I, there's something about that that kind of narrative and. Is that narrative or is that the level? That's a bit of both. It's kind I of. I think it's both. It's both. It's yeah. it's it's telling you. It's what I really like, and this is something I was going to go on to as we're going to talk about world design and, and level design that I like in general, rather than specific levels. Before we go, we go on to that. Is there anything else? Is there any other bad levels specifically that you can think of, Lou? Before we move uh, on to that? not really. I think we're in nostalgia mode now. I'm all thinking right. of all the great go great on, experiences Sam. I've had. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's it's. I don't know if you call it a mechanic unto itself, but it's it's using the game world to construct narrative, telling the story through things that you can see and hear and observe without having to have an exposition dump. You don't yeah. have to have a character go, long ago, this yeah. land was this. <laughs> you can walk around and see that this is an old ruin, there's, there's yeah. this, that, and the other. You know, you can pick up files and stuff. You know, a game that I talked about is one of my top games. The Last of Us does this probably better than any game, well, it's as good as any of your other games that you could say that do this. The the, the backstory of, of the of the the post apocalyptic outbreak is given to you in small pieces, but most of it is done through just walking around and seeing the you know the bullet holes in the wall, things for people have graffitied over the years, the way the plants have taken the world back. All that stuff is telling you a story that you just soak up by being there, mm. and you're not reading it written down. People aren't saying it to you in exposition. You've not got the characters saying. What do you think happened here all the time? They're just going through it, and they occasionally comment on stuff. I love that. That that, that was great. Bioshock was good for that. I haven't played System Shock, but being by the same creators, I'm guessing it does that. It tells the story a little bit through the world as you move through it. Was it the you same creators? See... It was Looking Glass Studios, I think. So yeah, yes, it think... was. Was it? No, I thought it was the same it, creative team. It was. Bioshock it was the same. Is... Ken, Ken Levine. Ke- Kev Levine. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Well, oh, that's I thought, interesting. Yeah, I thought he'd been there since the beginning, at least. He had on all the uh, shock games. Yeah, as far he, as he, 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 yeah. I didn't even connect them to if they're the, from the same studio. That's quite clever that they've used the same name. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people say the there's a bio, the bio bio shock. Shock. Oh, no. People do call Bioshock a steampunk version of millions, shock in a lot of ways, don't millions they? in marketing, Chris. I know. Wasted on you. We're absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ken. <laughs> uh, there was Sam's point there, though. There does seem to be a trend of dumbing things down. Overly, and it's taken over all the media streams. If you look at movies, like mainstream movies, games as well, obviously books. It's assuming that the person that's going to be like viewing this media or playing this game is an idiot. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. I, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say what I would say to you guys in in the privacy of a LAN party or something. But uh, yeah. you know where I'm coming from. The um, the problem is is that generally the public want. They want games, the public, and I'm talking about people who aren't prof- not professional gamers, sorry, professional or um, serious gamers. I consider all of us quite serious gamers, you know? Enthusiastic. Enthusiasts, yeah. Mm. We're, 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 we're a very small percentage of the people that play games these days. These so days, definitely. This is why we've got a casual market. This is why we've got the, uh, the mobile market and all this stuff that's kicking off. And that's if you're a game developer and you want to make money, you go down that route. If you want to make a game that you love, you don't, you know. But that's the that that's the problem. I've lost my train of thought. There was a big noise in my house then, sorry. Oh, it was about dumbing things down <laughs> and then being too explained for you or yeah, that, dumbing it down. The problem is is the same goes with movies. This as you said, that that they start adding things into movies that they think a larger demographic will be interested in, like they add in romance into films and things like yeah. that, think into action blockbusters that that's completely superfluous. And, and all the men in the audience will go <sighs> every time it happens. Wacky sidekick. Yeah, and most of the women, to be <laughs> fair, most of the women who like films, at least, you know, who aren't just going to the cinema to watch a film and you know enthusiastic about it. That I'm saying that it's it's there for the masses. It's not yeah. there for us, and the problem well, is, is we're getting our our hobbies getting affected by it. But I think it's sorry, bit, you uh, well, I think it's a bit of a it's it's almost a non-argument in that these what these media are set up to do is make money. Mm-hmm. Ostensibly, ninety percent of them uh, are doing things in order to sell the things that they're doing, 
And the way to sell, the way to maximize that is to actually make it appeal uh, appeal to a large enough audience. That's why these days you get a lot of movies which are PG-13 rated. Because if they did an R movie, then people under the age of 18 wouldn't be able to watch it. Well, you yeah, keep, but then you we're getting a distinction here because for me, a lot of these things, art, music, books, and for me as well, video games, computer games, if you want to call them, are an art form. Now, when they produce purely to make money, it's not an art form anymore. It's if, not, but if you if you need the, the budget you need to make a, a, a triple A game, means that you can't be, you can't really be that ambitious yeah, about it. Yeah, but that's the problem itself. These studios are setting out now not to make a great game. They're setting out to make money. That's their number one priority mm. on the list. We've got to make X amount of millions. Not we've got to make a fantastic third person shooter. That, that is or we've got. Okay, so I'm going to have to stop us because we are well off track there. Unfortunately, <laughs> right. uh, the subject is is levels and maps. This is a subject for another <laughs> it entire is podcast. Yes. I think yes. we've got this on the list of things that we want to talk about. We've got an infinite list, pretty much, of of subjects that we can we can witter on about. Um, I in think... terms of level design specifically, because that was what we were originally on about. That's what we were originally talking about. So yeah, um, I, I think uh, did you have you done all three, Lou, of your of your. Uh, I don't even think I did one, did I? Yeah, I think I did one. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, no, I can't. I can't think of any crap maps, really. No. I'm sure there are lots of them, but I, 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 it's hard, really, to to I, dwell on things that you didn't like. I keep in trying this case. To, yeah, yeah, I keep trying to um, think of maps that frustrated me, but I can't think of any. You know, things that like the mechanics were broken, or you know, I couldn't get over something, or I kept doing the same thing every time I went to an area of the map. You know, that I kept getting stuck on something or something like that. I'm trying to think of that, and I can't off the top of my head think think of that the, uh, the earthquake map on the original wipeout used to frustrate me because i can never make um, that really hard turn off the uh or was it wipeout 2097 2097 it, it begins with an s but i i was really good at that on piranha class i, I know I you the were hell out of that. it used to frustrate me because every time i'd done that i used to crash into the barrier regardless how i approached it they used to i'm gonna really put, i'm gonna put one last bad bad map or just bad maps or bad game in general and I've said it before, I think, on the stream, Big Rigs. The, <laughs> the maps on Big Rigs, they're just like... Have you, You've played it? Do you know what it is? I, I know of that. It, isn't that just the, 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 the crap you lorry are, racing game? Your win, I think, is one of the things that says at the end when you, when you don't win. And the AI stands still in the game as well. I'm going off topic again, anyway, but the maps are categorically broken. You can drive... Um, you go up hills, right... You can go off the map wherever you want. There was no, there's no like constraints. So that was one of the selling points. That it's open world like rig racing, and you you go up hills, but you go up hills like vertical hills at exactly the same speed. As <laughs> that way. And then you can go straight through hills as well, and straight through all the crowd and everything like that. There's no collision in a lot of the places. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of other issues with other things in the game. But yeah, in terms of the maps, that's uh, that's one of them. So, um, I think we're, we're pretty much on time now. We've uh, probably got maybe 10 minutes left, if, unless you guys have got anything to do. I'll, uh, I'll wrap things up. Anything to say? I think we've pretty much uh, I could probably start on another rant about pay to play, but we'll stay that on, uh, stay that for another week. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you, again, uh, if anyone's got any suggestions of things that you want to hear us talk about and, uh, and get on our high Geordie-ish horses about... Um, Geordie? Geordie-ish. Sam lives in Newcastle, at least. I know he's. Not a Geordie. <laughs> Why, I man, I can't do the two. I tell you what, we'll do a whole. <laughs> episode. Can you <laughs> do, we do, do a whole episode actually pretending to be Geordies? Because we're close enough. Accent, everyone, think, everyone probably thinks we are Geordies anyway. The way that we speak. Maybe not me. I'm dead posh now. You are, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> right. Um, we'll say goodbye then. Thanks for everybody who's watched. Um, so there is a few people in the channel, and uh, I quite, quite appreciate that. We'll be uploading this to YouTube. Uh, we now have uh, a YouTube, Twitch, uh, Facebook page, and something else. The fourth one. What's the fourth important Twitter? one? Twitter. Twitter. There we go. That's the most, most important one, arguably, apart from the actual stream itself. Um, everything will be updated and posted to Twitter. We're attempting to get everything updated and stuff. There's still no logos anywhere or anything like that, but we'll get there. Um, when Lou pulls his finger out and actually does some actual work. There's a finger for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am Chris. I am a, I'm going to do a bit of pimping for my own stuff. Um, I'm an indie developer uh, and many other things, but at the moment I am developing a game called Subnet. It is a first-person 
stealth hacking and parkour game. Uh, it's very ambitious. It's a long-term project. I think this is exactly what I said last time, and I'm not reading <laughs> got anything. Scripts, you got... I wish I did. <laughs> I, I've just said it that much. I've been on that. You just on autopilot. Yeah. Um, uh, I've got a team of people helping me from across the world. Actually, just America at the moment, but. Uh, I have had speak to other people anyway, and um, yeah. So I'm uh, uh, we're on Twitter at nineteen ninjas and uh, nineteenstoneninjas dot com is our website. If you're interested in the the project, it's still in development. It will be in development for a number of years because I can't find any artists that want to help me. Um, and uh, apart from that, I'm doing some game streams at the moment. I'm trying to make interesting game videos, but I'm not doing them very well. Operative word is trying there. Yeah, trying badly. Um, as I said, I've done a, I've done a six-hour stream of, of Lifeless Planet, and it was probably the worst possible game that I could have chosen. <laughs> I just spent the entire six hours going, oh. <laughs> just... Yeah. There's not a lot happening around here. Oh. oh, look. Oh, there she is again. There's that silly bint again. The silly Russian plant bint. Um, yeah, and, and that's me. Um, I shall let Lou do his pimping. Yep. Um, my name's Lewis, uh, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can follow me on Twitter. It's uh, at Looster32. I'm currently developing um, a turn-based strategy game based on a 1985 Julian Gollop, who did the original XCOM um, game called Chaos Battle of the Wizards. Uh, my game's called Archaos. Um, and that's been in development since 2009 and probably will be in development until the end of time. Um, and I'm also helping out with the HTML5 gaming community. Um, you can find me on HTML5 Gaming, I think it is, dot com. Um, it's a new one. And it is, yeah. That's what I've been doing that for a while, actually. Oh. Um, but, yeah, that's me, basically. I, uh, I, I actually just forgot. I also do a show called MMO Buff, which is... Um... On Thursdays at, and so does Lou by the sounds of it, um, yep. it's a, it's a, uh, the show that I do is on Thursdays, it's called The Data Mine, and it's all about uh, supporting indie developers, offloading information, we get guests on from all over the industry, um, we get other indie developers on talking about their games and going into quite a lot of technical detail about how to implement certain things, how to get tax breaks for an indie development studio in the UK, for example. Uh, we've had Team 17 on talking about... Um, talking about their publishing deal for indie studios at the moment, which is quite a uh, attractive one, and various other things. Anyway, uh, we we have all kinds of people on. If you're interested in coming on that kind of show, maybe um, it's it is a technical show, so you need some kind of expertise somewhere. Uh, we're always looking for people. Um, but yeah, that's Thursdays at one o'clock on uh, uh, UK time. Yep, and I'll also also be on um, the coming Monday at uh, eight o'clock UK time, I believe. Yes. Um, and I'm going to be talking about something. It's, it's like this, I think, that show. It's very... I think it might be a little bit more analytical, but it is basically... A, well, the Monday show for MMO Buff is a... Uh, I think it's it's just called The Podcast, the MMO Buff Podcast. And they talk about MMOs. They talk about gaming in general. And I think they have a subject each week. Last week, for example, uh, Josie was talking about... It was only her on the stream, and she was talking about audience participation um, in gaming. And that was it. And dogs. And dogs. And, yeah, everything. And a back been been knackered but yeah um that's me and lou uh, i will let sam and steve do their thing if they Fight. want to you say bye at least this time instead of going yeah. so. <laughs> um i don't really have anything gaming related to be pimping about but i'll just say yeah thank you very much see you guys next time yep um same as uh, i'm not gonna pimp uh but it's been an enjoyable first episode for me um, I'm looking forward to the next one, and I hope you all tune you in back. again. We're not having oh. you back, Steve. Screw you, then. Uh, after you've got the camera and everything, and you spent money on it, and uh, no, not not interested. You weren't very interested. That's right. I'll, 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 I'll make my own podcast. You talked over me way too much. That was the problem. I, I just try to tune you out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, anyway, guys, um, thanks for watching, and we will see you later. Um, thanks. See you later. Bye-bye. Da-da-da.